Good afternoon everyone. Before we begin, I would like to introduce first myself. I'm Attorney Therese Rayanne Aquino. You can call me Attorney Anne. So I graduated from the University of Santo Tomas Faculty of Civil Law, Batch 2013. So hello sa mga ka-batchmate ko nanonood dyan. Okay, so I took the bar in 2013 and admitted in the following year, 2014. So after taking the bar, I took a job in a law office and then uh, I pursued my my further studies at the University of Washington School of Law. So I uh, I obtained my Master's of Law degree in Global Business Law in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And then after that, I studied for the U.S. Bar and uh, and thank God I was admitted in the, I passed the U.S. Bar exam. So I'm a licensed attorney also in the U.S. in the state of Washington. So for those students, law students na interested to take the US bar, you can, uh, if you have inquiries, you can contact me. I will be willing to help you. So what else? So what do I do now? So I'm a senior partner at Estrada and Aquino Law. So if you know Attorney Estrada, he's my partner in the law office. So our law office specializes on education law. Education law is very, uh, it's a very complex practice. And then, masaya siya, actually. So, at first, parang ayoko, education, ano yun, education law. Pero, but I, but, pero, but I love education law. So, it's a, it's a nice practice. So, eventually, sana marami ding mga lawyers na mag-specialize on education law. And also, we specialize on data privacy compliance. But we do also handle yung mga typical cases like we do handle civil law cases, criminal law, you know, uh, we labor cases. So those are, are the cases that we handle in the law office. So that's uh, that's me. That's Attorney Ann. And uh, before we begin, I would like to, of course, ano ba, may mga viewers na ba dyan? Okay, so I would like to greet yung mga teachers ko na nandyan, na nanonood. Okay, so before we begin, I was asked to uh, give you some bar tips. So, dun sa mga hindi mag -e exam just bear with me kasi ano, I just have to provide this uh, tips and uh, pwede kayong humama ng kape, ganyan. So anyway, for our bar examinees, so I don't know if it's a good thing na na-move yung bar exam, no? So, na postpone, na postpone. So, it was moved in 2021. So, well, I guess... Since it's uh, it's there, that's the decision already na na move the shop sa 2021. I guess you just have to take uh, this as an opportunity to study more, so you have more time to study. So no excuse na para hindi matapos ang coverage. So bar tips, pagtawa na ako ng mga batchmate ko eh. So hindi naman ako sinag mamaya pero to be honest, nung time ko nung studente ako. Very diligent talaga ako. Hindi ako bulakbol na sudyante. So, ako yung nasa first row palagi. Ang gagawa ko sa first row. So, yun. So, ako yung ganun type na student. So, bar tips ko is, um, I study for, I make sure na I study for at least 8 to 10 hours. Kasi iba Manila yung 8 to 10 hours. So, uh, at least 8 to 10 hours per day. And of course, pag malapit nung lumalapit na yung bar exam, more than ano pa yan, more than 10 hours pa yan. So, nag-12, ganyan. So, actually, I don't uh, keep time na eh. Pero, I make sure na you, at least I meet the minimum. So, yun. So, kasi an, paniwala ko na as long as you study, talagang totoong study na hindi mo niloloko yung sarili mo na nagbabasa ka pero wala kang na-absorb. Pero, as long as you study, you really study talaga. Uh, you will pass the bar exam. Tapos, imposible namang hindi mo ma mabasa yung, diba, yung, kung talagang mag-aaral ka talaga. Well, I guess siguro may mga cases. Pero, in my case, ako na nag-exam ko, nag-exam ako, I think lahat naman is nabasa ko, kaya nang hindi ko ma-recall. <laughs> Yun. So, naalala ko kasi may mga legitim na tinanong, pinag-compute kami. Yun ang first question sa, ano, civil law wills. So anyway, uh, okay, what else? So, uh, nung time ko, it's I would also suggest siguro, I have a study body. So, yung study body ko, pares kami ng, ng topics na 
na inaaral. Uh, before pala dun sa second tip ko, another tip pala dun sa uh, 8 to 10 hours. So, you make a schedule. Yung ano, schedule na very detailed talaga. Like, for example, yung it, May 1, uh, from 8 to 10, ito yung topic. Criminal law, let's just say Article 1 to 10 ang babasahin mo. Parang ganun. So, you have to be specific kasi hindi uubra yung ano eh. Yung, kunyari, May 1 to 7, you will study criminal law. Ang tendency niya is, yung May 1, 2, 3, hindi ka mag-aaral masyado sa, ikakam mo yun sa dulo. Well, magaling tayo dyan, mga law students, nagkakam tayo sa dulo. So, ako, I would suggest na talagang uh, i- very detailed yung uh, study schedule nyo. So, you provide for the topics that you have to finish for this particular day or for this particular week. So, dapat very specific yung topics na you will cover. Yung iba per page, pero syempre, hirap naman ng per page din eh. So, at least topics ang ano, ang yung target topics nyo na matapos. What else? Uh, so, okay. So, may, yung sa next tip ko naman, may study body kasi ako. So, after, kunyari, after each day na, uh, kunyari, matapos yung araw, we uh, we do Q&A. So, yung Q&A will, ano, I think it helped me to retain some of the important topics. I mean, kahit na minsan nag-aaway pa kami na, hindi, ganito yun, we debate na kami. Pero at least, ano, nare-retain mo yung mga important topics, yung mga nakalimutan mo. Ganyan. So, yun. So, what else? Aside from the Q&A, so after, kunyari, matapos ko na yung civil law, yung buong civil law, ang gagawin ko naman is that may UPLC, yung mga, ano, yung uh, compilation ng questionnaire. So, I randomly pick like 10 questions there and then answer it. And then, ano then time, ano ka din, may naka, tinatime mo din yung sarili mo. So, yun. Yun ang tip ko. So, I guess it helped me practice yung uh, critical thinking, tsaka yung syempre time pressured ka na, and then yung handwriting mo. So, that's uh, for me, that's very helpful. Okay, so what else? So, I think now, uh, kasi usually, iba, for sure, iba na pressure kasi si Gento, may ano, may notes, si Gento, may mga cue cards siyang ginagawa to help him study. So, I guess it's not the time for you to reinvent yung yung study, yung, I mean, how you study for the exams. Ano eh, mahirap eh, kasi baka hindi ka comf- comfortable dun sa method ng iba. So, just stick kung saan ka comfortable. And, yung iba, diba, ang daming, ako, naka, fourth reading at ako. Ne, third, ne, anyway, I don't know, I forgot, pero, masa more than two ang readings ko. Ayan, so, but it will, it might not be helpful or it might not work to, uh, to anyone, to, to other people. So, dun ka kung saan ka komportable. Okay, so that's my bar tips. Okay, so kung may maalala ko, discuss ko na lang later. Okay, so let's now uh, focus on our discussion today. Ang haba ng introduction natin. Okay, so let's now focus. So yung mga... Uh, Viewers natin na hindi bar examinees, pwede na kayong bumalik. Okay, yan. Okay, so, okay, so our topic for today is, of course, data privacy. And the outline uh, of my lecture is based on the syllabus provided by the Supreme Court. So, don't worry din sa mga hindi natin bar examinees. It, this, will, uh, this is a good uh, refresher for you. So, I'm sure you've attended a lot of uh, data privacy seminars na in the past. But it's a good, uh, I guess, this this is a good opportunity for you to refresh. Okay? So, okay, so let's start. Okay, so in your constitution law, so the concept of privacy has been discussed extensively. So, I don't know kung sino yung mga professor niya, pero for sure, you've discussed this as part of your uh, syllabus, so yung Bill of Rights, so you've discussed privacy. So, in general sense, the right uh, to privacy is the right to be left alone. Okay, so the right to privacy is the right to be left alone. So, sino po yung mga single dito? Yan. Mag-thumbs up yung mga single. Oh, hindi. So, yung right to, your right to privacy is the right to be left alone. So, it's your right to be left alone. Kung gusto mo maging single, okay lang yan. It's your right. Okay, just kidding. So, yung joke lang ako. Sorry, may baka matamaan. Okay, so... So, I'm just kidding. So, again, right to privacy is the right to be left alone. So, if you take a closer look at your at the 1987 Constitution, you will never find an express provision 
stating or providing for the right to privacy as a fundamental human right. Kahit pagbalibalik ta rin nyo pa yan, wala kayo makikita specific provision on the right to privacy as a fundamental human right. So, while it is true that there is no provision in our constitution, it is nonetheless replete of the rights that aim to protect privacy. Ano ba yung mga rights na yon? So, constitution, so, it's a review of your constitutional law. Ano yon? So, you can find those rights in Article 3, the Bill of Rights. So, Section 2, Article 3, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, effects, uh, against unreasonable searches and seizures of whatever nature and for any purpose shall be inviolable. So that's Section 2, Article 3. Uh, another provision is uh, Article Section 3, Article 3. The right to privacy is also inferred from that section. It provides the privacy of communication and correspondence shall be inviolable except upon lawful order of the court or when public safety or order Require. So these are the two provisions according to our Supreme Court. Uh, recognize, I mean, because of these two provisions, the Supreme Court recognized that in our jurisdiction we have this right to privacy. Okay? So when we talk about privacy, it's a broad concept. So let me just, I mean, this is not part of the syllabus, but it's a good um, introduction. So you'll have a better grasp of the data, pri data privacy. Okay, so there are, privacy, when I talk about privacy, it's a very broad concept. So there are areas of privacy na kung saan lagi may issues. So ano ba yung mga areas na yun? So one is, of course, information privacy. Uh, bodily privacy, that's another. Territorial privacy and communication privacy. So, information privacy, it's concerned with establishing rules that govern the collection and handling of personal information. Bodily privacy, focus on person's physical being and any invasion thereof. So, ito yung mga, like, for example, you cannot be compelled to uh, to uh, undergo DNA testing as a rule. Of course, syempre, may mga exemptions dyan. And um, territorial privacy concerned with placing limits on the availability to in on the on the ability to intrude on the ability of the government to intrude to one's individual or personal environment. So ito yung uh, right against unreasonable search and seizure. Communication encompasses the protection of means uh, of the means of correspondence, including mail, email, telephone, etc. So these are the areas where in there are always issues on on privacy but when we talk about data privacy our only focus is information privacy so we're not talking about right against unreasonable search and seizures here so we we, we focus on the information privacy so data privacy is information privacy so what is now information privacy so information privacy is usually defined as the right of the individual to control information about themselves so for example Ikaw, na padaang ka sa mall, and then may promo, so kailangan mo mag-join sa raffle. So, it's your choice whether kung mag-join ka, you'll have to provide your personal information. So, it's your right to control information about you. Okay? So, information privacy is also, it also refers to the rights and obligations of individuals and organizations with respect to the collection use retention and disclosure and destruction of personal information so that's in for again our focus for today is information privacy or data privacy okay so what's the policy of the state ito very important to kasi siguro kung wala ka nang masagot sa bar exam you just have to uh, relate your answer to the policy of the state so it is the policy, so I'm reading from the law, it is the policy of the state to protect the fundamental human right of privacy of communication while ensuring free flow of information to promote innovation and growth. The state recognizes the vital role of information and communication technology in nation building and its inherent obligation to ensure that personal information in information and communication system in the government and in the private sector are secured. And protected. So what does it mean? So it means that data privacy, the law, does not actually prohibit processing of personal information. Kasi ang misconception dyan is, oy, wag na natin i-process or wag na natin i-collect kasi violation yan, bawal yan sa data privacy. So it's not that. So the data privacy does not actually prohibit the processing of personal information. And in fact, 
the law recognizes the benefits and the efficiencies of using personal data. Diba sabi nga sa law, they recognize it for, for nation building. So the law strikes balance between the privacy rights of individuals and the ability to support free flow of information. So in sum, while the law promotes the utility of information, it provides a comprehensive regulation to ensure the protection of individuals' privacy rights. So they just have to balance the interest. Syempre, we cannot uh, limit or prohibit the processing of information because, of course, research, diba? they thrive on information. So we, we just have to balance the interest, the privacy rights of the person and the free flow of information. Okay? So that's the policy of the state. So let's now uh, discuss, let's now uh, focus our attention to the first uh, part of our discussion, which is the definition. So here I will be discussing the terms that you have to remember. But it's good if you memorize the term. So I will just explain it in layman's term. But later on, uh, you have to memorize it. Kasi siguro, the, the, examinees, or the examiners will look for keywords. So let's uh, first discuss person, what is personal information or personal data. So, uh, okay. So understanding what personal information is very important because... Again, we're talking about information privacy. So before we determine whether the, this law will apply, we have to determine if we're dealing with the personal information or not. Okay? So personal information under the law refers to any information whether recorded in a material form or not from which the identity of an individual is apparent or can be reasonably and directly ascertained by the entity holding the information or when put together with other information would directly excuse me and certainly identify an individual so it's a long definition diba ang haba paano mo i-memorize yan but i will provide you the elements so ito yung kailangan mong Siguro once you cited these elements, ma pwede, mo, pwede ka na maka-craft ng, yung, ng definition mo. Okay, so, personal elements of personal uh, data. So, when I talk about personal information and personal data, I'm referring to one and the same thing. Personal information or personal uh, data. Okay, so, any, number one, any information. So, it means any statement about a person. It could pertain to objective information or subjective information. So objective yung facts. We're dealing with facts. Uh, the president of the Philippines. Uh, what else? Um, subjective naman yung opinions. Ganyan. So take note, even opinions could be considered as personal information. So it's any information. And uh, it's a uh, example would be for exa uh, example online identifiers. So online identifiers, baka inisip nyo hindi siya personal information, but uh, no IP or the internet protocol address is considered personal information because it can be used to identify or to identify the the user. So the IT yung mga IT experts natin will be able to do that. Pero ako hindi ko alam kung paano, but I, but your IP address can identify the user. And uh, what else? Cookies. Yung cookies, hindi yung chips ahoy. So cookies, yung di ba pag nag-visit kayo ng mga website, there is this um, usually a notice that will pop up na allowing you or uh, asking for your consent to collect cookies. So cookies kasi, these are, ano te, parang same with the concept yung cookie trail. So they uh, parang nagiiwan sila ng uh, I don't know ng some ng something hindi <laughs> ko ma-explain ng something para the next time you visit na ma-identify kanila na okay so it's the same person na who visited that last week or something like that so yun yung cookies and of course your location location is also personal information so if you know yung ano nyo yung uh, if you're using iPhone your iPhone collects yung mga recent visited places ninyo so, ako, makikita nyo na, unyari, when I check yung nagpunta ako sa hearing na ito, so nakikita the, the area where you are, yung frequented visited ninyo na places. So, yun. So, lo that's location. And it's also considered personal information if it has the ability to identify that person. Okay? So, the information may be in a manual or electronic form. So, manual yung kung paper records, 
uh, naka-file yan. Tapos, electronic naman, syempre yung mga cloud computing services natin. And next element, so we're done with any information. So next element, identity of an individual. So the information must relate to an individual. So however, the information that relates to, to events may also be considered as information. So ano ba yung example that relates to an event? So the, chair per, the chairperson of the 2013 bar examination. So even though, I'm, I mean, it's not specifically mentioning the person or the identity of the chairperson of the 2013 bar examination, you would know who's that person. So, sino ba? Yung time ko, it was uh, Justice uh, Brion. Siya yung chair, bar chairperson namin. So, what else? Um, okay, so, yeah. So, next element is apparent, reasonably, and directly ascertainable. So, this means the natural person is identified either expressly or there is a possibility that the that the identity of that individual will be identified again it's not necessary na specifically name yung individual you can also there i mean there's also personal information if there's uh, there are pieces of information that you can you can combine and then that pieces information combined will be able to identify that individual so uh, example the CEO, the CEO of uh, ABS-CBN company in year 19, 1992. So if you combine those information, you will be you will be able to identify yung sino ba yung CEO na yon. Sino ba? Hindi ko alala. Okay, so yon. So that's apparent, reasonably, and directly ascertainable. Okay, so another last element is individual or natural person. So the personal data must refer to a natural person or an individual. So example, uh, information about the company. Kunyari kung sec registered ba siya or registered siya with the DTI. So we're not talking about information uh, about companies or, or juridical entities. So the Data Privacy Act focuses on individuals. So, the information must relate to an individual, not to your pet. So, hindi pwede information ng aso nyo ni, ni Bogart or ni Mingming. So, hindi pwede. So, must, basta individual dapat, natural person. So, also take note that under Section 17, Transmissibility of Rights of the Data Subject, Ito kasi very peculiar to in the Philippine setting. Kasi in Europe, the under the General Data Protection Regulation, hin, ang disease or ang patay, they are not considered as data subject. So, hindi sila living, kailangan ang qualification ko nila is living individual. So, here, under our, in our jurisdiction, uh, Section 17 of the law provides for the transmissibility of rights of data subjects. So, in effect, kahit napatay ka, you can still exercise your rights as a data subject through your heirs and assigns. So, you can just read Section 17 on the transmissibility of rights of data subjects. So, we can say that even deceased person is covered by data privacy. It's considered as an individual under Data Privacy Act. Okay, so to recap, so ano yung elements? Uh, it's any information, and that information must uh, must be able to identify an individual and apparent, reasonably and directly ascertainable. So kahit na hindi specifically identified individual, as long as there is a possibility that individual will be identified, so uh, that's considered personal information. And again, it must relate to a natural person. It could be living or disease okay so those are the elements so basically when we talk about personal information information it's anything that relates to an individual that's simple anything that relates to an individual to a natural in natural person or individual okay so there there are two concepts that i would like you to know when we talk about personal information this is the concept of pseudonymization i hope i said that correctly Sorry kung mali ang pronunciation ko. So, pseudonymization. So, it means that 
So, when we talk about pseudonym, pseudonymization, sorry, paulit-ulit, uh, it means na we're still talking about personal information. So, what, 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 what does it mean? So, this is a process wherein you detach some of the aspect or attributes of the data in order for that person to be less identifiable or to, hi- to hide the identity of that person. So, it's actually a security measure. So, example, kapag na pag nanonood kayo ng soko, yung mga binablur yung boses, ako po, si ganun mo na, so yan. So, that's a form of, um, you hide a certain identity of the individual, like blurring of images. So, blurring of images or this, this guy's voice, yun yung mga modes natin in order to pseudonymize the, the data. So, under the law, pseudonymized data are still considered personal information. Pero siguro less ang protection because tinanggal mo na nga yung uh, attributes niya to make him easily identifiable. Pero still, it has to be protected. Pero lesser lang. Lesser. So, ayan. So, pseudonymized data. Okay. So, as compared to anonymized data, ano naman yung anonymized data? So, it uh, anonymized data is not related to an identified or identifiable individual. So when we're talking about anonymized data, it's not it, it's not considered as a personal information. So pag anonymous data na yan, the data privacy will not apply kasi hindi siya considered as a personal information. Yes, it's an information pero it's not an information that relates to an individual. So ano bang halimbawa niyan? Yung mga statistics natin. 85% o kanya 80% of the passers are male uh, 50% uh, of the uh, covid patients are uh, coming from the Calabar zone something like that so these are just mere statistics meaning kahit na pagbalik-balik ta rin mo yung data hindi mo malalaman kung sino ba yung mga uh, individual na na tinutukoy dun sa information so dapat yung true anonymized data, yung totoong anonymized, yung irreversible na yung, hindi mo na siya mababali-baliktad. It's not considered as a personal information. So, hindi siya covered than data privacy. Okay? Next concept natin is sensitive personal data. So, again, sensitive personal data, it, uh, same thing with personal data, it's uh, any personal information that relates to an individual. Kaya lang, pag, pag, when we talk about sensitive personal data or sensitive personal information, this is, um, the law provides for a special protection to certain categories. Ito yung specialized category kasi uh, the law thinks na if this is uh, un- processed unlawfully, there is a greater impact on the, uh, or prejudice on the rights and freedoms of the individual. Kaya siya special or sensitive personal data. Kasi mas grabe yung impact niya kapag nagkaroon ng breach, ganyan. So ano ba to? So, Sensitive personal information refers to personal information about individuals' race, ethnic origin, marital status, age, color, religious, philosophical, or political affiliations, about an individual's health, education, genetic, or sexual life of a person, or to any proceeding for any offense committed or alleged to have been committed by such individual, the disposal of such proceedings, or the sentence of any court in such proceedings issued by the government agencies peculiar to the individual which includes but not limited to SSS, the number, current health records, licenses, etc. Specifically established by an executive order or Congress to be kept classified. So these are the sensitive personal data. Example. So sige, sabihin niyo sa akin kung, kung sensitive uh, information ba siya or pers- just an ordinary personal information medical history of the patient is it sensitive or ano ordinary personal information lang of course it's sensitive personal information kasi it relates to the health student's grade okay so sensitive personal information din siya kasi it's uh, an inf- uh, information about education how about personal data revealing financial information? Financial information lang. Like, not necessarily the deposit, pero financial information. Okay, so... Okay, so if you take a look of uh, on the list, there's no mention about financial information. So it's not a sensitive personal information under the law. Pero, syempre, of course, 
we uh, be mindful of yung mga special laws natin like the yung sa laws on the deposit, de ba? Very confidential yon. Okay? Social media posts relating to a sexual orientation. Is it sensitive or just an ordinary personal information? Okay, it's sensitive. Sensitive kasi nakalagay dun sa law. Sexual life of a person. So, so, eto, one of the misconceptions siguro. Kasi when, pag sinasabi nila, well, kung nasa public na daw yung information, it's not, uh, it's not protected by data privacy. Uh, that's wrong. So, even though the information is available to the public, it doesn't mean na hindi na siya personal information. So, I guess, I mean, less, less expectation of privacy, but still, it's covered by data privacy. So, even uh, social media posts relating to sexual orientation is considered as a sensitive personal information under the law. Next kind ng uh, personal information natin is the privileged information. So, this is just a recap of your remedial law. Okay, so this refers to any and all forms of data which under the rules of court and other pertinent laws constitute privileged communication. So, you have the spousal, spousal privilege, lawyer-client privilege, doctor-patient privilege, priest uh, penitent privilege and public officer privilege. So we will not discuss this um, uh, the the enumeration here. But please note that uh, privileged information under the rules of court are considered uh, se sensitive personal information or privileged information under the Data Privacy Act. Okay. So, next definition is personal information controller. So, sino ba tong personal information controller? Or the, or the data controller or controller, means for short, controller. So, personal information controller or data controller refers to a person or organization who controls the collection, holding, processing, or use of personal information, including a person or organization who instructs another person or organization to collect, hold, process, use, transfer, or disclose personal information on his or her behalf. So, uh, it excludes uh, two, uh, cate two I categories. A person or organization who performs such functions as instructed by another. So, please take note of the first exclusion kasi this is related to the data processor. Actually, itong first exclusion refers to the data processor. So, we will discuss later kung sino ba yung data processor natin. And the second exclusion is the an individual who collects or holds, processes, or uses personal information in connection with individuals, personal, family, or household affairs. So, example ng personal or household affairs. Ako, kunyari, uh, I have a son, pero baby pa naman kasi siya. So, for example lang, malaki na siya. So, I attended uh, graduation of my son. So, I took photos of him on the stage, etc. Ganyan. Tapos, may performance din sila. And then, pinrent ko yung photos and then I put it in the album. So, pag ako yung gumawa nun, it's not a processing. So, because it's excluded under the the law. So, I'm an individual who collected that uh, photo for personal, family, or household affairs. Pero if it's, for example, it's the official photographer of the school and the school will upload it in their website, etc. So, that's the different scenario. So, in that case, the school will be considered as, I mean, the school is considered as a personal information. So, they have to comply with data, with the requirements of the law. So, yun yung example ng personal, personal, family, or household affairs. Another example is, kunyari ako in the neighborhood, I, I keep an address book. So, I collect the numbers and the names of our neighbors. So, well, basically, you're processing kasi you're collecting data and then you're putting it in a in an address book. So, that's processing. Pero, under the law, I'm excluded kasi that, that is excluded because I'm using it for personal, family, or household affairs. Okay, that's clear. Okay, so... Again, the law provided for a long definition, pero just to for you to remember it, so remember that the data controller could be a natural or a juridical person. So natural then, kasi may mga sole proprietors tayo na they engage in the business that uh, engage in a business that would require them to process information. So again, it could be a natural or juridical person. They could act alone or jointly with others. 
so the our data controllers can act with uh, together with another data controller so the data controller determines the the purpose and the means of the processing so what does it mean so they determine the reason for processing and the manner how or how would the how they would process the personal data so remember when we were talking about data controller the data controller is the key decision maker in the processing of personal data so they, they determine you know, the the means and the purpose of processing so your later on we will discuss uh yung dpo if you're familiar the data protection officer so your dpo is not the controller so when the company appoints a person or a compliance officer hindi siya yung data controller the company or the institution itself is the data controller and also it's a good thing to emphasize also that the individual employees they are not processors I mean, see, later na lang yan, we'll go back to that because we're still talking about controller. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so again, um, when we talk about controller, uh, it is a natural or juridical person, or it could also be a government agency, DepEd, Jed, they're also considered uh, data controllers. They could act alone or jointly with others, and they determine the means and purpose of processing. So they are the key decision maker in processing of personal data. Okay, so uh, also remember that uh, if you are, there are different, uh, different controllers may share uh, data from one another. So that's the, where the term uh, data sharing will come in. So data sharing is the disclosure of uh, disclosure or transfer to a third party of personal data under the custody of the personal information or processor. So in case of uh, in case of the disclosure to uh, to a processor, it sh there should be uh, some sort of an agreement. So let's just focus. For example, if the data uh, is disclosed from one controller to another controller, so they have they have to they have to have an agreement to govern their relationship. So usually that's what we call the data sharing agreement. So. So that, that's uh, data sharing. Okay, so what else? Okay, so let's now move on to our next uh, term, which is the personal information processor. Ito na yung sabi ko yung discussion kanina. Okay, personal information processor refers to any natural or juridical person to whom a personal information controller may outsource the processing of personal data pertaining to data subject so remember if you go if we go back yung um there's an exclusion provided under the law yung sa definition of controller so num the, the first exclusion is that a person or organization who performs such functions as instructed by another person or organization so ito yung ano ito yung inf uh, personal information processor or data processor so when we talk about processor ang concept niyan is that uh, there's uh, you outsource some uh, processing activities in your company because it's uh, cost efficient. You just you don't want to process your own data, so you just hire a third party who will process your data. So if if that's the situation, then the entity or that third party is the processor. So the data processor is a separate legal entity with your controller. So again, the yung discussion natin kanina na the, this, the individual employees of the controller of the data controller like for example the teachers the secretary the registrar they're not considered as individual processors hindi po sila processors they're part of the controller because they're just they mean they're employees of the controller so the the controller acts through them so hindi po sila considered as processors so they're just part of the data controller what else so the different departments also like uh, academics, science department, etc. So, hindi din sila considered as uh, different processors. So, they're just, uh, they just form part of the data controller. So, again, the data processor is a separate legal entity with respect to the controller. Okay? So, the, the data processor is the person that processes personal data on behalf of the controller. So, the existence of data processor 
will depend on the decision of the controller. So, uh, kung if the que- uh, kung ang tanong nyo is uh, is it uh, lawful or yes, lawful naman yung pag uh, pag outsource ng processing. Pero the decision whether to outsource it will will depend on the controller. So the controller will have to determine whether to delegate that uh, processing activity to another individual or to another organization. Uh, another thing to remember, if you're a data processor, you have to process data based on the instructions provided by the controller. So, yon. so usually it's um, indicated in the agreement. We call that agreement as the data processing agreement. So, yun yung binding um, uh, law between this uh, the controller and the processor. Okay, so uh, I will not discuss the specific uh, provisions that should be indicated in the data processing agreement, but it's a good thing that you uh, you just have to emphasize that the contract or the data processing agreement should uh, include the subject matter, the duration of the processing, the nature and the purpose, of course, the instructions of the controller, the type and categories of personal data that will be uh, processed, the obligations of the processor, etc. So, you just browse uh, the IRR. I think the IRR has a comprehensive uh, list. Okay? So, that's the personal information processor. What is the duty of the personal information processor? So, the personal information processor shall comply with the requirements of the law. So, hindi po sila exempted under the law. So, they have to comply with... Um, with the requirements of the law. So, ano ba yung mga typical processors natin? Like, for example, in a company, they outsource yung mga payroll activities na. So, para hindi na gawin ng HR or na accounting department yung payroll, so they outsource it. Uh, another example is that if you maintain a database, so kung very costly sa company to keep their own database, yung to maintain their own server, ganyan. So, they hire a third-party company to to facilitate or to maintain their database, okay? So, that's data uh, processor. Okay, so, ano naman yung processing? So, our next definition is processing. So, the law, uh, it refers to any operation or any set of operations performed upon a personal information, including but not limited to collection, recording, organization, storage, updating, or modification, retrieval, Consultation, use, consolidation, blocking, erasure, or destruction of data. Again, it's a long definition, but basically what it says that processing is anything you do with the personal information. It's anything you do with the personal information. That's processing. So, ex- ang mga, so nag-site lang yung law na example, collection, recording, organization, blocking, etc. So, it's anything with, you do with the personal information. That's processing. So, if you allow access to personal information, kahit na hindi nila kinakopya yung personal information, by mere allowing access, that's already processing of personal information. Okay, processing may be performed through automated or manual processing. Okay, so, okay, next uh, item is the data subject. Okay, so data subject, refers to an individual whose personal information is being processed. So basically, data subject, ako, ikaw, the employees in the company, the students in the school, they are considered as data subject. And again, uh, please take note, Section 17 of the law, uh, wherein it provides for the transmissibility of rights of data subjects. So even deceased person can exercise the rights of a data subject through their heirs and assigns. So please take note of that. Okay, so we're done with the uh, with the terms of uh, the important terms of uh, in the under the law. So we will now discuss the scope of application. So okay, pa ba kayo? Gising pa kayo? Nakatulog na kayo? Okay. Excuse me. Okay, scope of application. So. When we talk about data privacy, it applies to processing of all types of personal information and to any natural and juridical person involved in the processing. So again, the mention natin, it applies to any information that relates to an individual. It also applies to a natural or juridical person, uh, yun yung controller and the data controller and the data processor. And um, it also applies to, to some extent, uh, 
although the this personal information controller or processor are not found in the Philippines or established in the Philippines, they will they this law will still apply if they use equipment located in the Philippines or those who maintain branch or office agency here in the Philippines. So the, so that's the general uh, scope. But when we talk about scope, I want you to remember two aspects, the territorial scope and material scope. When we talk about territorial scope, ito yung more on the geographic um, uh, application of the law. So territorial scope, the law applies to processing of personal data, of course, done in the Philippines. So if, it is, if the processing is done in the Philippines, there's no question. It will always, I mean, it will apply in the Philippines as a general rule. So, to some extent, it applies also for uh, it applies also to the processing done outside in the Philippines. So, let's just take a uh, look at the law. So, the law applies to an act done or practice engaged in and outside of the Philippines if the natural or juridical person involved in the processing of personal data is found or established here in the Philippines. So, basic example here like corporations incorporated here in the Philippines, like a microfinance corporation lending loans to to uh, individuals. So these microfinance companies are uh, covered by the data privacy. Uh, another is the act, practice, or processing relates to a personal data about a Philippine citizen or Philippine resident. So here, take note, regardless whether the the data controller or processor is located abroad like US, Singapore, or South Africa as long as they process personal information of a Philippine citizen or, or a Filipino resident, they are covered by the data privacy. So example, if there's a um, foreign website, kasi Facebook meron na silang office dito and Google. So I can't think of any any um, company na walang op TikTok siguro baka wala silang office dito. So, TikTok. Just, let's just say na wala silang office dito. So, if they process, malamang, they process personal information of citizens kasi maraming mga subscribers. So, even though they are located in China, but they process personal information of Filipino citizens and residents, they are covered by the data privacy. Okay? So... Okay, next is processing of personal data being done in the Philippines. So, of course, it's, there's, there's no question. So, as long as the processing is being done in the Philippines, kahit na hindi incorporated your company in the Philippines, but the processing is done in the Philippines, then they are covered, that uh, act or practice is covered by the data privacy. Okay, another is the act, practice, or processing of personal data is done or engaged in by an entity with links to the Philippines with due consideration to international law and committee so such as but not limited limited to the following so if that entity use equipment located in the country or maintains a, an office branch or agency in the philippines for processing personal data so example uh, um ano na lang, hypothetical example na lang kunyari uh merong server here i mean they maintain a server here in the philippines so kahit na yung processing is being done um let's just say, in the U.S., but they store the data here in the Philippines. So, ayun lang, mere storage lang. So, they are covered by the, that uh, act of processing is covered by by data privacy because they use equipment located here in the Philippines. Okay, so a contract is entered in the Philippines. So, kahit na yung processing activity is not actually happening in the Philippines, but the contract is entered in the Philippines, then they are covered by the data privacy juridical entity unincorporated in the Philippines but has central management and control in the country. So very self-explanatory. So even though the corporation is not registered here in the Philippines but they conduct actual business here in the Philippines, they conduct meetings here in the Philippines, as long as you satisfy your central management and control, so they are covered by the data privacy. The entity that has a branch, agency, office, or subsidiary in the Philippines and the parent or affiliate of the Philippine of the Philippine entity has access to personal data. So here, the mother company probably registered in a foreign company, but has access to the personal data being maintained here in the Philippines. Okay, the an entity that carries on business in the Philippines, an entity that collects or holds personal data. So, a union territorial scope of application. So again, just to recap, uh. Uh, just to highlight yung extra extraterritorial application niya. So again, it applies 
uh, extraterritorial application, it applies if the act or practice or processing relates to a personal information about a Philippine citizen or resident. So, regardless of the location of the processor or controller, as long as they process personal information of a Filipino citizen or resident, uh, they are covered by the law. And again, if the entity or the act has some links uh, to the Philippines. So, ano ba yung mga example na yun? If they maintain equipment located in the country or maintains an office or branch or agency in the Philippines for processing of personal data, if the contract is entered in the Philippines, if the a company is a juridical entity not incorporated but has the central management and control in the Philippines, uh, what else? So, a parent company has access to the personal data by the personal data held by the branch agency or office located here in the Philippines. An entity that carries business in the Philippines and an entity that collects or holds personal data in the Philippines. So, ito yung may mga extraterritorial application. So, it's good if you memorize this. Okay, so, okay, so we're done with the territorial scope. Let's now talk about the material scope. So, Material scope, again, the act or the law applies to the processing of all types of personal information, which may be performed through automated or manual processing. Ano ba yung mga manual processing? Ito yung mga typical processing natin na we collect in sa mga forms natin and then we collect that, we we arrange that forms in some alphabetical order, nalagay natin sa cabinet natin, yan. So, that's manual processing. So, so again, as a general rule, the law applies to all kinds of processing of personal information. However, there are special cases wherein the law will not apply even though you are processing uh, personal information. So, ito yung mga exclusions. Kaya siya, sinama natin sa material scope kasi as a, general, as a general rule, this law will apply to any processing of personal information. Pero there are certain instances wherein even though you're processing personal information, it's not... Uh, cover or it's it it is excluded under the law. Okay, so ano ba yung mga exclusion na yon? So, but uh, please take note that the exclusion is not a blanket exemption. So hindi ibig sabihin na you fall under the exclusion, hindi ka na comply sa data privacy. It's not that. So it's not a blanket exemption. So the law provides that it will only apply to the minimum extent necessary for the purpose for, for the purpose function or the activity concern. So, ano ba yun? So, number one, information, public access to information. So, this is in relation to the Freedom of Information Act. So, information process for purpose of allowing pub public access to information that fall within the matter of public concern is uh, excluded under the law. So, ano ba yung mga information na yun? Information about an individual who or is or was an officer or an employee of the government that relates to his or her position. So, take note, uh, it relates to his or her position. So, including the fact that he was an officer, etc. Title, address, office, telephone, classification of salary, responsibilities, the name of individual. So, paano ba yung sinasabi ng law na to the, only to the minimum extent necessary? Meaning, dito lang ang yung, yung exclusion niya. So, if you're uh, asking for personal information about the family, family uh, information of that uh, individual officer na employed ng government, like for example, if you're asking the probably the name of the wife, kung saan nag-aaral yung mga anak niya, so that's not covered by the exclusion. So that information is protected by the data privacy. So I hope that's clear. So again, it's not a blanket exemption, but only to the minimum extent necessary for the purpose function or activity concern. So, uh, number one is public access to information. What else? Under this uh, exclusion, uh, exempt, excluded also is the information about an individual who, who is or was performing a service under a contract for a government institution. So, yung mga contractors natin bidding for, for government projects. So, they can, I mean, you are, um, what's this? You are, the, the information is excluded under the law. So, pwede kang, so, including the name of individual in the terms of his contract. Okay? Information relating to a benefit of financial nature 
conferred on an individual upon the discretion of the government. So yung, I guess, scholarship grants. So it's not uh, covered by data privacy. So uh, I guess uh, people can inquire as to the um, uh, details of this uh, grant uh, by the government. Okay. So, yeah. So public access to information. Okay, so next exclusion is journalistic purpose. So, personal information process for journalistic, artistic, or literary purpose in order to uphold freedom of speech, of expression, or of the press subject to the requirements of the applicable law or regulation. So, again, personal information process for journalistic, artistic, literary purpose, it's excluded under the law. And note that uh, publishers, editors, or duly accredited reporters of newspaper or media company, uh, they cannot be compelled to reveal the source of their information. Because later on, as we will discuss, the data subject has the right to know the source of the personal information. So because of this provision, the, the, the reporters cannot be compelled. Because it's specifically stated here that they cannot be compelled to divulge the source of any news report or information about that individual or data subject. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, publishers, editors, and reporters who are likewise personal information controllers within the meaning of the law is not exempt. They're not exempt or they're still bound to comply with Data Privacy Act. Like, for example, ABS-CBN, GMA. So, even though they have this journalistic purpose exempt or exclusion, they are not exempted to comply with the requirements of the law. Like for example, they have employees also. So there are controllers with respect to the employees or with respect to the information they're collecting from their employees. So they still need to comply. So again, the, ex the exclusion is only applicable to the minimum extent necessary to fulfill that purpose or activity. Another exclusion is for research purpose. So personal information that will be processed for research purpose intended for public benefit so it's excluded under the law so uh let me highlight the qualifier here so the research must be intended for public benefit so i guess it's not just any other research so it must have some public benefit okay so another important thing to note when it comes to research purpose the rights of the data subject excuse me as we'll discuss later on are not applicable if the process personal information are used for scientific and statistical research. So just please take note of that. Okay, so what else? Another exclusion is information necessary for banks or other financial institutions under the jurisdiction of the Banco Central. So ito yung mga to comply with uh, Anti-Money Laundering Act, Credit Information Act. So it's, it's excluded under the law. Okay. So meaning again excluded na you don't na you can process it without uh, complying with the requirements of the law. Because later on we will discuss that when you process personal information, you have to have certain legal basis. So since excluded sila, you don't need to actually like determine or find a legal basis for processing. Okay, so public uh, function. Another exclusion is information necessary in order to carry out the functions of public authority, which includes the processing of personal data for the performance by law enforcement and regulatory agencies of their constitutionally and statutorily mandated functions. So for the exclusion to apply, the personal information process by the public authority must be necessary to carry out their function as law enforcement agency or regulatory agency so this does not apply to any other to any to any law uh, government agency so they must be pursuant to a law enforcement agency or regulatory body and such processing must be in accordance with their constitutional or statutory mandate so hindi po pwede like for example a government agent government agency gusto lang nilang mag inquire ng mga information about individuals so they have to have a basis under the law or they must they, they must be authorized under um under the constitution or uh, under a statutory law okay so the law enforcement agency must establish its mandate to enforce a particular law and more importantly that they are uh, not unreasonably infringing on the rights in individuals guaranteed by the constitution okay 
So, our last exclusion is uh, personal information of foreigners. So, the law provides that personal information originally collected from the residents of foreign jurisdiction in accordance with the laws of those foreign foreign jurisdiction which is being processed in the Philippines. So, it's they're not, uh, they are um, excluded from the application of the law. So, who has the burden to prove the foreign law? So, the burden of proving the foreign law uh, falls under the person seeking the exemption. So, in the absence of proof, the applicable law shall be presumed to be the Data Privacy Act. So, again, I would like to highlight, to emphasize that these exclusions are not blanket exemptions. So, it only applies to the minimum extent necessary to achieve the specific uh, purpose, function, or activity. And um, from uh, apart from the, the list that I've mentioned, the personal information of foreigners, public function, compliance with the law, banking laws, research purpose, what else, journalistic purpose, public access to information, I would like to add uh, another exemption or another exclusion. Ito yung, ex ito yung um, exclusion under the definition of data controller. So, remember, processing of personal information that is done by a natural person in the course of purely household, personal and household activity is um, uh, excluded also under the law. Okay? So, we're done with the scope of uh, Data Privacy Act. So, remember uh, the two concepts, the territorial and the material scope. So, territorial, we're talking about the geographic location of the processor and the controller. So, there are instances where in the, even if the processing is outside the Philippines, it was, the Data Privacy Act will still apply to those entities. Um, memorize yung uh, entities or activities that has some link with the, in, link to the Philippines. And um, when we talk about material scope, as a general rule, it applies to processing of uh, personal information. But there are special cases wherein the this law will not apply, and the the these cases are as follows: yung uh, public access to information, journalistic purpose, research purpose, uh, public authority, uh, personal information of foreigners. Uh, Processing pursuant to banking laws, yeah, and, and of course, yung addition natin is the process, uh, personal and family household affairs. So, if you're processing personal information for personal and family household affairs, that's excluded under the law. Okay, so our next topic is the general data privacy principle. So, whenever we, uh, so whenever you encounter these principles, just always remember that you have to comply with these principles every time you process personal information, whether you are a controller or processor. So, kahit na may basis ka under the law, but if you fail to comply with these general principles, you are still violating the law. So, uh, general data privacy principles, there are three. So, we have transparency, legitimate purpose, and um, what else? Uh, proportionality or, per or data minimization. So, Transparency, uh, it means that you should be, as a da the data controller or the processor, should be clear to the data subjects as to how they will use, how they will collect, uh, what else, how they will, uh, whether they will disclose the data. So, uh, the, princ the principle of transparency requires also the personal information controller and the processor to uh, craft their communication to the data subject in such a way that it is accessible and easy to understand. So, if you're dealing with minors, of course, you have to craft it in a way na maintindihan nila. Kung ano naman, kung hindi sila nakakaintindi na English, you also craft, you should also craft your information in their, in the vernacular that they can understand. So, ano ba yung mga information na kailangan natin sabihin sa iparating sa data subjects natin? So, number one, uh, of course, the identity of the controller. Sino ba yung nagko-collect ng data or nagpa-process ng data? You have to inform them also if you're, if you will uh, disclose the data to another entity. If you are uh, processing, if you're hiring um, a processor to do the processing activity, so you have, you also have to inform them that you're subcontracting. Uh, what else? So, you also have to inform them about their rights. Uh, what are the security measures that, you're, uh, that, that you put in place in order to uh, secure or ensure the confidentiality of their data? 
in case that uh, there will be uh, questions who is the contact person so usually that's the dpo so so you have to inform so the law provides for the list of the things that you need to inform the data subject so that's trans that, that's transparency okay what else so uh next principle is the legitimate purpose so this means that uh under this principle you should uh the data controller or the processor should not process the personal data that will violate the law contract or regulation so example of course that will uh, not should not violate the data privacy act what else kung contract naman it could be a non-disclosure agreement or other laws yung intellectual property rights so you should not uh, process personal information that will violate the law contract regulation okay so another another uh, principle is the principle of proportionality or data minimization so this basically uh, provides that the processing should should be adequate relevant suitable and necessary and not excessive in relation to the declared specified purpose so you should only collect enough data in order for you to accomplish the specified purpose so if you later on later on find out that the that your that some of the data that you collected are irrelevant so it means you've collected uh, excessive data so hindi sila, hindi, sila, hindi sila kailangan to accomplish your purpose so you're violating the principle of proportionality okay so hindi din pwede yung uh, yung attitude na collect for convenience so yung uh, collect na lang natin kasi baka later magamit natin or collect na lang natin kasi wala lang so ko lang collect kasi baka it might be handy in the future so that's not allowed so it violates the principle of proportionality again the principle of pro proportionality mandates the data control and processor, pro processor to only maintain and collect enough data that are necessary in order to accomplish their specified purpose okay so that's these those are the principles general principles of data privacy now let's uh, move on to our next topic which is the general principles in the collection processing and retention so you will realize later on na nag overlap tong mga uh, principles natin like for example transparency will somehow overlap with the purpose limitation uh, what else proportionality uh, will overlap with um, uh, data uh, with uh, what else oh Proportionality will also overlap with purpose limitation. So yeah, so may mga overlapping, but it's okay. So as long as you can, uh, you can, uh, you familiarize yourself with these uh, principles, and then if just in case na itanong siya sa bar, so just cite ano yung mga principles na related to the processing being questioned. Okay, so uh, okay, let's now. Uh, talk about the general principles in collection processing and retention so again every time you process personal information you have to take into consideration these principles so ano ba to? so purpose limitation so collect only data i mean collection must be for declared specified and legitimate purpose so the data subject must be provided for the information regarding the purpose and the extent of the processing so kung may automated or if you do data profiling, so you have to inform them. You have to inform your data subject. Okay? Fairness and lawfulness. Okay, so processing of personal data is lawful when it upholds the rights of the data subject, including the right to object or withdraw the consent. So when we talk about lawfulness, ito yung, um, it connotes that uh, the processing is compatible with the declared specified and legitimate purpose. And also, lawfulness uh, um, would also mean that you identified the condition, uh, at least you satisfy one of the conditions uh, for lawful processing. So later on, we will discuss the, the criteria for lawful processing. So lawfulness would require us to at least identify at least one condition or you at least satisfy one condition under the, under the uh, criteria provided by the law. Okay, so that's lawfulness. So when we talk about fairness naman, so it means that you don't process data that will unduly, uh, that will be detrimental 
or misleading or that is misleading to the individual. So you, it also means that personal information should be handled and processed in a ways that data subject would reasonably expect and not use it in ways that causes adverse or detrimental effects uh, on the data subject. Okay. Okay, what else? So next principle is data quality or accuracy. So processing should ensure data quality. So it means that personal data should be accurate and were necessary for declared, specified, and legitimate purpose and kept up to date. So, kailangan ba from time to time i-update yung data? So, it will depend on the purpose of maintaining that data. So, if it is for purpose of establishing uh, historical, I mean, if, if it is for establishing a certain event or for historical purpose, you don't have to um, update it from time to time. Like, for example, just... Uh, if the information is uh, kept in order to establish that I'm a resident of, let's just say, Antipolo uh, in the past, so you don't have to update it. Pero kung the information is being retained, kasi customer ako, I'm a returning customer, so uh, the address should be updated. So it should reflect the current address. So again, uh, it, I mean, kahit na siya inaccurate, it doesn't mean that you you have to update it. So, it will depend on the purpose. So, if the purpose is just to establish a certain fact in the past or for historical purposes, then you don't have to update it from time to time. Okay? So, another, another uh, principle is storage limitation. So, basically, this provides that personal data shall not be retained longer than necessary so you can only retain the data as long as it is necessary for the fulfillment of your declared specified and legitimate purpose so what else so you can retain also data for establishment or exercise or defense of legal claims so if you're um, if you uh, if you think that you'll be needing the contract to establish some legal claims you can uh, keep that contract. So, for example, written contracts may prescription period, so it is enforceable for for uh, for a period of uh, ten years. Kono man yung cost of action mo based on the contract. So you can keep that for for that period. Ano pa? For example, uh, may mga employees ka na dismiss na, although dismiss na sila, but if you think that there is a uh, reasonable belief na they will file labor cases so you can keep their ano, uh, information or relating to the to the incident or to the case what else so you can also keep uh, the information for legitimate business purpose which must be consistent with the standards followed by the applicable industry or approved by appropriate government agency so again you can retain uh, information uh, as long as it's as it as long as it is necessary for the purpose and uh, again there's no uh, retention period provided by the law so there's no specific like dates or period within which you can you should retain the data so it will depend on the purpose so as long as you can justify the retention then that's that's okay okay so what else okay so under the law, uh, there are instances wherein you can keep the data for a longer period. So, ito yung tinatawag natin authorized further processing. So, ano ba yun? Example ng authorized further processing is uh, for uh, historical purposes, statistical or scientific purposes. So, if you're keeping the data based on historical, statistical or scientific purpose, you can keep it, uh, you can keep it uh, for a longer period. So, if you do this, if you're uh, holding this data, this uh, personal data for these uh, purposes, then you have to ensure that there are adequate uh, safeguards. So, kailangan, you have to ensure there are physical, technological, or organizational security measures in order to ensure the security and confidentiality of this um, personal information. Okay? So, can personal data be retained perpetually in contemplation of a possible future use? So, personal data shall not be retained in perpetuity 
in contemplation of a possible future use yet to be determined. So, kung hindi mo pa alam, kung wala ka pang concrete plan as to how you will use the data, then you cannot, uh, you cannot keep it perpetually. Okay? Okay, so we're done with the... We're done with the principles. So again, just a recap. So the principles of uh, data privacy are number one, the transparency principle, uh, purpose limitation, and proportionality. And when we talk about uh, and general data, I mean general principles. What uh, this? Uh, general principles in collection, processing, and retention. So we have purpose limitation. Uh, fairness and lawfulness, data quality or accuracy, storage limitation, and adequate safe. And you have to ensure adequate uh, safeguards when it comes to authorized further processing. Okay, so these those are the principles that you have to take into consideration every time you process, you collect, you um, use personal data. Okay, so let's now move on to our next topic topic which is the criteria for lawful processing so um, one of them is conceptions under the law is that we always need to get consent before we process personal data so that's not true actually consent is just one of the conditions under the law so there are uh, different criteria or conditions under the law that the data controller can uh, may rely upon so again consent is not the default Although it is true that consent is the is at the heart of data privacy, but again, there are different conditions that uh, data subject can uh, may rely upon. Okay, so okay, let's just uh, let's first discuss consent. So consent, uh, what is consent? So it refers to any freely given, specific, and informed indication of will, whereby the data subject agrees to the collection and processing of his or her personal. Uh, sensitive data or privileged information. So elements of consent, number one, it must be free. So the element of free implies that there's a real choice and control for the data subject. So hindi po pwede yung, yung sorry, yung default, yung default yung mag-agree ka na yung consent. So the data subject must be able to choose from uh, uh, between agreeing and uh, not agreeing to that to certain processing or to certain uh, operation so again it should be free and free uh, dapat real yung choice niya hindi po pwedeng uh, compelled yung uh, pag consent ni data subject and another uh, element is specific so the service so marami sa mga companies natin there are uh, different processing operations so Yung iba, ang ginagawa is they bundle the processing operation. So, para ang consent is that, magko-consent sila dun sa entire uh, processing operations. Pero in fact, pwede naman siyang hiwa-hiwalay. So, kung bundled operation siya or multiple processing operation siya, the data subject must be able to consent to consent or to um, withdraw consent for, for each uh, processing operation. So, specific siya. So, hindi siya pwedeng bundled uh, consent okay okay inform last um, element is informed so the data subject must be uh, must be informed of the risks and before giving his uh, his or her consent so again as a rule um, the data subject can refuse or can withdraw his or her consent in form. Okay, so what is the fo the form of consent? So consent shall be uh, evidenced by uh, by written, electronic, or recorded means. So wala namang specific requirement as to ano yung paano ikakraft yung consent. What the law requires is that it should be uh, written, electronic, and recorded. And uh, may a consent be given on behalf of a data subject? So yes, a lawful representative duly authorized by the data subject or or the data subject's agent may give consent on behalf of the data subject. So for minors, the parents can uh, provide for the consent or I mean, they, the minors should exercise the, their consent with the guidance of their 
parents. Okay, so what else? So another criteria or condition is the fulfillment of contract with the data subject. So the controller can rely under this uh, condition. So you can resort to this condition if the processing is necessary to perform the contract and the data subject is a party to that contract or kung wala pang contract, uh, in order to take steps at the request of the data subject prior uh, into entering to that contract. So, ano ba yung example nito yung mga wala pang contract prior prior entering into a contract? Like, for example, if uh, the data subject is inquiring for a specific project and then the controller will have to provide a, a sample quotation. So, syempre, in doing the quotation, probably uh, the data control will be requesting uh, certain personal information. So, with that request, kahit na wala pang contract, uh, ano pala, initiatory negotiations pa lang. So, you can rely on their contract. So, a uh, typical example of contract is, of course, employment contract. So, you don't have, as a general rule, you don't have to get the consent of the employees if um, employees, if you're uh, processing information based on for purposes of employment, so the contract, employment contract will suffice. Also, for enrollment purposes, sa mga students natin, that's the general rule. But if you're dealing with uh, sensitive personal information, you will uh, later, on, we will discuss later on that there is no uh, contract as a uh, lawful basis under the law. So, in that case, you need to get the consent of the employee or the student. Okay, what else? Again, when we uh, talk about contract, it must be necessary to fulfill that contract. So, kung hindi naman necessary, then you cannot rely on this criteria or condition. Okay? What else? Uh, legal obligation. So, you can rely on this lawful basis if you need to process personal data to comply with a statutory obligation or legal obligation. So, example, uh, employers are required to uh, submit the list of their, um, the names of their employees to SSS. What else? Uh, DepEd, CHED, uh, they're requiring the schools to submit the list of their graduating students. So, these are the legal obligations. Okay, so another condition is vitally important interest of the data subject. So, if you need to process personal data, you can apply this or you can rely upon this, uh, this criteria if you need to process personal data to protect data subjects' life. So, usually, I, we, uh, we can apply this criteria in case of emergency because if the data subject can provide the consent, um, uh, you should be able to uh, get the consent instead of relying uh, under this condition, in this condition. Okay, so again, it should be necessary. So if you can reasonably protect the, pers the person's vital interest or the data subject's vital interest in another less intrusive way, then this basis will not apply. Okay. Another uh, criteria is to respond to national emergency, to comply with the requirements of public order and safety, or to fulfill functions of public authority, which necessarily includes the processing of personal data for the fulfillment of its mandate. So, actually, there are three conditions here that you can rely upon. So, number one, to respond to national emergency. So, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the government officials or some other entity may rely upon this uh, this condition so to respond to national emergency. So I think, like for example, in other countries, uh, they're using the location data to track for contact tracing. So, yun, I think, uh, pwede din siya maging justified if uh, you will uh, process location data without necessarily getting the consent ng mga uh, individuals. So, if you will uh, use it uh, to respond to national emergency, possible naman siyang ma-justify under this um, condition. And to comply with the requirements of public order or safety and to fulfill the functions of public authority. So, public authority, this is uh, related din dun sa uh, earlier discussion natin na there's a law enforcement or regulatory uh, body. 
Uh, so in this case, um, when we talk about uh, f functions of public authority, what does it mean? So the government agency must be authorized under the law or charter to process personal information. So hindi porket government agency siya, may karapatan na siya kagad na maghingi or mag-process ng personal information. So first, check kung the law or the charter of that government agency uh, allows that agency to process personal information. Uh, so also, hindi din pwedeng blanket uh, processing. So kunyari, once we've established na, example lang, ang PNP can, uh, can uh, process personal information information for purposes of investigation, hindi din pwedeng lahat na lang ititingnan or ipaprocess. So, dapat limited din. So, we have to comply with the principle of proportionality. They should only process uh, information enough to fulfill the purpose or kung for investigation man yun. Okay? As for instance, NBI pursuant to their authority can process information for the purpose of investigation. Dole naman has the duty to ensure that companies are compliant with the statutory benefit. So, ito yung mga uh, basis nila on processing personal information. Okay? Uh, and also, again, it must be necessary for the purpose of the legitimate interest pursued by the personal information controller. Okay? Okay, so the last... Uh, uh, the last criteria under the under uh, this um, section is that the processing is necessary for the legitimate interest pursued by the personal information controller or by a third party. So here, legitimate interest is um, it's uh, I, well I can say it's a, it's the most flexible lawful basis for processing. So, but you cannot assume na ito yung mag apply for, or this is the appropriate uh, basis for all types of processing. So, I mean, ano na siya, flexible because as long as there's a legitimate interest and that the, and that it outweighs the, the privacy rights and interests of the individual, you can rely on this um, provision or on this basis. Okay, so in order to determine whether the, you have a legitimate interest, so first, of course, identify the legitimate interest. Ano ba yan? For, um, uh, for safety ba? Uh, security? Ganyan. So you have to determine the legitimate interest. Okay, so second, after determining that you have already the legitimate interest, you have to balance it with the rights of the data subject. If, if, uh, if, even if you have a legitimate interest but it is uh, detrimental to the rights and uh, freedoms of the data subject, then you cannot rely on legitimate interest. So if you choose on this uh, uh, basis, legitimate interest, you have the data controller has the responsibility for ensuring that the data subject rights and interests are fully considered and protected. Okay, so again, recap. So whenever we process personal data, you have to comply with the with the principles of data privacy and principles in collection, processing, and retention. And uh, apart from that, uh, in order to comply with the lawfulness, you have to satisfy at least one condition or criteria under the law if you're processing personal data. So, ano ba yung mga criteria under the law? So, number one, consent, but consent is not the default. Number two, if it is pursuant to a contract in which the data subject is also a party, if it is uh, uh, based on a legal obligation, uh, vital interest of uh, the data subject in case of national emergency, public security, safety, and uh, public function. And lastly, if it is for legitimate interest of the controller or uh, processor so so these are the uh, conditions or criteria that the data that the data controller may rely upon so in order for them to satisfy the principle of lawfulness so kung wala ang criteria kung nagprocess ka ng data and you cannot satisfy any of the conditions or criteria under the law then you're violating the the law so that could be an unauthorized processing
Okay, so that's these. Those are the criteria that we uh, use if we're processing ordinary personal information. So, ito naman yung discuss natin uh, are the criteria that we will use if we will process sensitive personal information. So again, there there's a different criteria, set of criteria for uh, processing ordinary personal information, and there's also a, a criteria for processing. Uh, sensitive personal information. But, but, uh, ano sila? Same lang. Halos lahat same lang din sila. So, ano ba yung mga criteria? So, when, when it comes to processing sensitive information, as a general rule, it's prohibited. Unlike sa, dun sa ordinary personal information, it's allowed as long as you, uh, as long as you satisfy any of the conditions provided under the law. So here, when we process sensitive personal information, general rule, it's not allowed unless it falls under the, one of the exceptions. So ano ba yung mga exceptions? So when there's explicit consent. So again, it's the same consent that Explicit consent. The data subject has given his or her consent specific to the purpose prior to the processing. In case of privileged information, so if we're talking about privileged information, all parties to that uh, exchange or communication sh should have given their consent prior to the processing. Okay, so that's explicit consent. Another uh, condition or criteria is provided by existing law or regulation. So I guess uh, it's the same with the uh, legal obligation, the, the one that we've discussed earlier. So processing of sensitive personal information or privileged information is provided for by existing for for by existing laws and regulation. Okay. So uh, life and health of data subject. Processing is necessary to protect the life and health of data subject or another person. And the data subject cannot legally or physically uh, give or express uh, his or her consent prior processing. So again, it's the same with the, the one that we've discussed earlier. I thought this one, uh, for lawful non-commercial objectives of public organizations and their associations. So it's a major, um, major vague term provision ito because under GDPR, it applies to organiza I mean, organizations in general. Kasi ito, the law uh, made mention of public organizations and they did not the law did not did not define naman what's a public organization but if you take a look at this um criteria may conditions siya eh. and one of the conditions is also getting the consent so parang ganun din get the consent then so ano ba yung nakalagay dito so the processing is necessary to achieve the lawful and non-commercial objectives of public organizations and their associations provided that Processing is confined and related to, related to the bona fide members of these organizations. The sensitive personal information are not transferred to third parties and consent of data subject was obtained prior to the processing. So, ganun din, di ba? You need to get the consent of the data subject. Okay, so medical treatment. So, ito yung wala sa uh, earlier, dun sa categories ng ordinary personal information. So, medical treatment, the processing is necessary for the purpose of medical treatment provided that it is carried out by the medical practitioner or medical treatment institution. Okay? So, that's medical treatment. Another criteria is protection of lawful rights and interests of natural or legal persons in court proceedings. So, here, the processing concerns sensitive personal information or privileged information necessary for the protection of lawful rights and interests of natural or legal persons in court proceedings or establishment or exercise of defense or legal claims when provided or when provided to the government or public authority pursuant to a constitutional or statutory mandate. So that's... Uh, Protection of lawful rights and interests of natural or legal persons in court proceedings. Okay. So, uh, another topic is uh, subcontracting. So, personal information controller may subcontract the processing of personal information. 
So the decision whether to subcontract will depend upon the controller. So ano ba yung subcontracting? So the personal information controller shall be whenever the 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 data controller uh, if the data controller decides to subcontract uh, a processing activity, ano yung mga responsibilities ni data controller under the law? So the data controller is responsible to put in place some safeguard to ensure the confidentiality of the personal information being processed and to prevent its uh, use for an authorized purpose and to comply with the requirements of the law. Okay, so under uh, the law, agreements for outsourcing. So once the, once the personal information controller or the data controller decides to outsource certain processing activity, then that uh, that uh, processing or that decision should be uh, covered by some uh, legal or contractual obligation. So, so here it is provided under the law that processing by personal information processor shall be governed by a contract or legal act. So again, pag ako si controller, I decided to outsource some processing activity. So I will I will hire the services or engage the services of a personal information processor. So in the course of hiring that, meron kaming contract and that contract would be the agreements for outsourcing or what we call the data processing agreement. So usually when we talk about data processing agreement, the parties involved there are the data processor and data controller. And when we talk about data sharing agreement, it's usually a contract between two controllers, two data controllers. Okay, so, so what should be uh, stipulated in the contract? So number one, the process uh, process the personal data only upon the documented instruction. So again, if you recall a while ago, we discussed that the controller has the um, the controller determines the means and purpose of processing so uh, it means that the data controller determines the purpose and the manner of processing and in order to do that of course there must be some uh, instruction given to the processor so the processor will only act upon the specific instruction provided by the controller okay so what else so ensure that an obligation of confidentiality is imposed on persons authorized to process personal data. So, kung ikaw si processor, you have the obligation, syempre, may mga employees ka na magpa-process ng data, you have also the obligation to uh, make sure that they sign confidentiality or NDA agreement. Okay? So, what else should be stipulated? So, implement appropriate security measures. So, later on, we will discuss what are, uh, ano itong mga security measures under the law. So, you have to implement also appropriate security measures. Uh, what else? Not engage another processor without prior instruction of the controller. So, hindi mo din pe, hindi mo siya, as a general rule, you cannot subcontract without the consent of the controller. Okay, what else? So, you as a processor, you have to assist the controller by providing technical organizational measures in order for, for the controller to fulfill its obligation under the law and assist the controller in ensuring compliance with the law. So that's your obligation as a, that's the thing that you have to stipulate. These are the things that you have to stipulate under the contract. Okay, so what else? Oh, okay, so meron pa pala. So, at, uh, so the controller may also um, obligate or mandate the, the processor to delete or return the personal data and uh, make available to the personal information controller all information necessary to demonstrate compliance. So, for example, if there's a data breach, so usually if there's a data breach, uh, the controller should be the one. Kunyari, nagkaroon ng data breach dun sa processing, outsource processing natin. So, si processor will have to inform the, con the controller about the security incident or the data breach because under the law, it is the data controller who is obliged to... Uh, to uh, make the necessary, the required notification. So, so yun, kailangan i-assist ni uh, processor si controller in order for it to comply with their, with its uh, mandate under the law. 
uh, and of course to immediately inform the personal information controller if in its opinion uh, an instruction infringes the uh, the infringes the law okay so what is the duty of the personal information processor under the law the personal information processor shall comply with the requirements of the law so you the personal information processor is not exempted under the law so you have to comply okay so another uh, topic is privilege communication so we've discussed this earlier privilege uh, communication so we all know that the privileged information or communication under the rules of court they are all considered as sensitive personal information and they can only uh, be processed if you uh, if you are able to get the consent of all the parties to that communication like the doctor and the patient the lawyer and the and the client etc and um uh, uh, what's interesting here is that the personal information controller may also invoke this privilege communication. So, di ba sa rules of court, uh, alam natin, the, the holder of the privilege can uh, can invoke the privilege. Pero here, the controller itself, the personal information controller can uh, invoke the privilege over the information that uh, that is uh, lawfully under its uh, control or process. So, uh, nakikita ko example dito like for ano um halimbawa a uh, medical records so you have a doctor tapos meron kang patient so kayo you're bound by the doctor patient privilege and then but the document or the the information is under the custody of the hospital let's just say St. Luke's ganyan so say the 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 controller who has the custody of your information can also invoke the doctor patient uh, privilege okay so what else so subject to existing laws and regulations any evidence gathered from privileged information is inadmissible okay so we're almost done okay so our next topic would be the rights of a data subject okay so the data subject the law recognizes certain rights. Ano ba tong mga rights na to? So, we have ano ba to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 7? 7, yan. So, we have 7 rights. So, ano ba tong rights na to? So, number 1 in the list is right to access. The data subject has the right to reasonable access upon demand on the following. Uh, contents of his uh, her personal data that were processed, sources from which personal data were obtained. So remember, kapag, um, uh, kapag um, if, remember the journalistic uh, purpose, the, the reporters and media personnel are exempt from divulging the, the source. So, ito yung sinasabi kong related sa right to access. Kasi, ang data subject has the right to be, uh, to know the the source from which the personal data were obtained. So, ito, pag, ano siya, in relation to journalistic purpose, hindi mo compel yung journalist or yung reporter to divulge. So, even though the data subject has this right to access. Okay. What else? Uh, access to names and address of recipients of personal data, manner by which such data were processed, reasons for disclosure of personal data to recipients, if any, information on automated processes. Yan. So, yun yung mga things na, ito yung mga bagay na pwedeng i-access ng, ng data subject natin. Okay. So, ang ano dyan, example, for example, if you're a school and uh, an, uh, a student, your former student inquires, so you have to determine whether such inquiry is uh, an, an exercise of this right to access. Okay? So, yun yun. Uh, so, an uh, uh, example ko dito is, Paano yung, kunyari, may mga exam, examination, di ba? Usually sa ibang school, you don't, hindi mo na nakikita yung mga exam mo eh, no? Uh, ano, uso yun sa law school eh. Uh, 
basta magulat ka na may grades ka na lang, pero hindi mo nakita kung anong grade mo sa exam. So, if we apply this, ano, this principle of, or of this right, if we invoke this right, right to access, uh, yan. So, pwede mong uh, i-check. Kasi, person, that's, a, that's a personal information. Yung test paper mo, your answer, your grade, yan. So, pwede mo siyang gamitin. You can invoke this right in order to check. Pero, hindi naman ibig sabihin na you, you have the right to get copies. Pwede mo i-access, pero not necessarily to uh, to get copies or to take photos of that, of your exam. Kasi, syempre, yung iba, for integrity purposes, you keep the your, the examinations. Yeah, so, right to access. Okay, so, next is right to rectification. So, the data subject has the right to dispute the inaccuracy or error in personal data and have personal information controller correct it immediately and accordingly unless the request is vexatious and unreasonable. So, ano, so uh, this is self-explanatory. So, if there are data na inaccurate, or may erroneous data, the data subject, the the data controller must be able to rectify it immediately. So, ang interesting dito, uh, how about example, uh, merong employee na na-dismiss, uh, sabihin natin, based on uh, misconduct. So, nag-follow ng due process and everything, hindi naman siya pinag-initan. Basta, ano lang, may misconduct siya. So, eventually, na-dismiss siya. And then, nag-file ng, so, it's in her record na na-dismiss siya based on misconduct. Tapos, nag-file siya na illegal dismissal case sa NLRC. Ngayon, sabi ng NLRC, uh, yung conduct, question conduct, is not, ano, is not justified, ano, ground for dismissal. So, sabi ng, ano, misconduct pero hindi siya ano hindi siya gross ganyan so hindi siya pwedeng mad- parang yung penalty of dismissal is not uh, appropriate dun sa ginawa niya misconduct so sabi ng sabi natin ng NLRC ano merong uh, there's an illegal dismissal so pwede bang sabihin ni employee na okay school or employer can you remove that ano yung yung miscon yung uh, it- yung information about misconduct kasi sabi nung nung NLRC naman eh hindi naman ako oh, there's an illegal dismissal. So ako ang take ko doon is that the employee cannot uh, request for the removal kasi hindi naman siya inaccurate. Eh. It's still a fact na nagkaroon ng ganung incident na he or she was uh, subjected to discipline and ang finding ng school is a uh, there's a misconduct. Pero syempre, I mean, but based on the NLRC's um, decision, hindi siya hindi siya sufficient to dismiss the employee. So hindi naman siya talaga inaccurate. It's still meron pa rin nangyaring uh, disi- I mean disciplinary disciplinary procedure and that the school found out that there's a misconduct. It's just that the NLRC uh, has a different view. So hindi siya inaccurate data. So I, I mean in that instance, I don't think that the employee can um, ask for the rectification or erasure of that data. Okay, so what else? Okay, right to erasure or or right to be forgotten. So this is a very um interesting, right? So I wala pa kung hindi wala pang actual. I'm not sure if there's an actual application here in the Philippines. Pero basically, uh, what this right um tells us is that the data subject shall have the right to suspend withdraw order the blocking or removal or destruction of the of his or her personal data uh, if upon disco- discover discovery and substantial proof of any of the following so number 1 if the data is incomplete outdated false or unlawfully obtained so you can exercise your right to erasure number 2 if the personal data is being used for purpose not authorized by the data subject the personal data is no longer necessary for the purpose for which they are collected. You can also seek for the erasure. The, da- the data subject withdraws the consent or objects to the processing, and there is no legal ground or overriding the legitimate interest of the processing. The personal data concerns private information that is prejudicial. 
to data subject unless justified by freedom of speech, expression, or of the press otherwise or otherwise authorized. So what else? The processing is unlawful. So pag unlawful, you can uh, seek for its uh, deletion. The processing, the person information controller or processor violated the rights of the data subject. So, uh, if the data subject would exercise this right to rectification, right to deletion, or right to um, erasure, they have to, or right to object, uh, it is the obligation of the controller to inform the third parties. Na, to inform the third parties. Like, for example, if the controller disclose or share the disclose or share the information, personal information of an individual to another company, and then later on, that individual will exercise uh, his or her right to erasure or objection or uh, what else, um, right to object to that to the processing. So it is the obligation of the company to inform that third party that this individual is exercising its right to erasure yeah, or right to object or right to rectification. So going back to right to erasure, um, uh, I would just like to share a specific case. Uh, it, it's uh, decided in the EU. So uh, ang involved dito is Google, Google Spain. So what happened here is that uh, there is this lawyer na meron siyang, I'm not sure if criminal case, but may case siya. So, uh, the case happened 10 years ago. So, nung ginugal search na yung pangalan niya, nakita niya yung case na yun na 10 years ago. So, sabi niya, ano na to, tagal na to, tsaka na-acquit naman ako dito sa, ano eh, sa charge na to. So, sabi niya, hindi na to, irrelevant na to, uh, it's outdated, so, it's, ano, um, so, kailangan ma-erase na to. So, it's a, uh, ano, it was published in a newspaper uh, in a newspaper ano, company tapos uploaded sa internet. So, kaya siya, kaya searchable sa Google. So, ngayon, anong sabi ng, ano dito, ng, ng court? So, sabi nila, si Google, what is clear is that when Google, di ba, pag nagsusearch ka, may mga, ano yan, eh, algorithm na ginagamit ang Google. So, yung pag, um, compute nila ng algorithm, that's form of processing. So, kasi iniisip nila, eh, Google, inire-retrieve lang naman niya yung mga information na available online. Di ba? Parang ganun. Pero, uh, the the court, the EU court said that um, it's a form of processing pa rin. Yung pag-determine nila ng algorithm. And, uh, but, uh, what happened in this case, interestingly, uh, the court did not, uh, uh, what is, did not order the newspaper company to remove the article, I think, because of in consideration of the freedom of the speech, or and of the press. But what the uh, court did is that they ordered Google to delink everything that will uh, that will link to that uh, article. So, kunyari, ang ginawa ng in order ng court para hindi na siya uh, searchable sa Google. So, pag sinearch niya yung pangalan niya, hindi lalabas yung article. So, dinilink lang yung yung siguro yung name niya in that particular article. So, actually, uh, when you when you think about it, there's no, parang hindi naman siya na-delete. It's the, I mean, the information is still there, pero it's just hard for an individual to search for that information. So, para kang bumabalik sa old system na yun. Kunyari sa library, if you have to uh, look for something, iisa-isahin mo yung, ano ba tawag dun? Yung maliliit na card. Sorry. Hindi ko alam yung tawag dun. So, yun. So, isa-isahin mo yun. So, ngayon, kasi with the internet, Google, ang dali-dali na. Search mo lang, di ba? Malalaman mo na. So, so kaya, ano siya, right to be forgotten lang ang tawag. Kasi, nakakalimutan ka lang kasi hindi ka na-searchable. Pero, it's still there. The information is still there. So, that's an example of the right to be forgotten. So, I think, uh, it's very interesting kasi you have to balance the the uh, yung freedom of speech and and expression so you cannot just ask for the deletion of data kung it's something na that is uh, newsworthy so kahit na past na siya or uh, matagal na siyang wala na uh, mahirap pa rin siyang i-request yung ano yung pag-delete ng data so let's see kung anong mag, anong magiging decision dito sa in our jurisdiction
Okay, so that's right to erasure. Okay, so right to object. So as a rule, we've discussed this earlier, consent can be withdrawn. But uh, so the data subject can withdraw the consent through the exercise of the right to object. So the data subject shall have the right to object to the processing of his or her personal data, including the processing for direct marketing. Ano ba example na to? So di ba, uh, kung kayo nagsusubscribe ba kayo ng mga newsletter, yung mga ganyan sa Lazada, um, what else? Yung sa mga favorite websites ninyo. Kung nagsusubscribe kayo, di ba, tinik nyo na you want to receive uh, monthly updates, ganyan. So, uh, you exercise your right to object if you unsubscribe. So, that's your right to object. So, ayaw mo na. Ayaw mo, nang, ayaw mo na makareceive ng mga marketing materials nila. So, that's your right to object. Okay? So, what you have to remember under this right to object is that when the data subject objects or withholds the consent, the personal information shall no long the controller shall no longer process the personal data unless unless so here are the exceptions so eto ibig sabihin kahit na kahit na uh, withdraw ni data subject yung consent niya uh, hindi pa rin mapaprocess pa rin yung personal information so again when the data subject withholds or objects to the withholds the consent, the personal information controller shall no longer process the personal data unless. So, ito yung mga instances na pwede pa rin i-process ni, ni uh, personal information controller. So, number one, when personal data is needed, pursuant to a subpoena, the collection and processing are for obvious purposes, including when it is necessary for the performance or in relation to a contract or service to which the data subject is a party or when necessary to, or desirable in the context of employer-employee relationship between the collector and the data subject. So, an example nito is yung, ako, ang typical example ko is in, in, in an education institution. So, we, we, uh, we've discussed earlier that uh, the whenever they process personal information, they can rely on contract kasi um, enrollment, there's an enrollment contract that is being, a contract between the student and the school. But uh, we've also learned uh, earlier that education is a sensitive personal information. And as a sensitive personal information, uh, you can only process it if you satisfy the conditions provided under the law. And contract is not one of the conditions under uh, sensitive personal information. So uh, in order to process that, so you have to probably, most probably, you have to get the consent. So once na pre-provide ni data subject yung consent niya, hindi niya pwedeng i-withdraw na yon Or kahit na i-withdraw pa niya, pwede pa rin i-process ni data subject. If obvious purpose eh, hindi naman, hindi pag binidraw ni, ni student yung consent niya, di, hindi na siya makagraduate. Parang ganun, di ba? So, so that's, uh, yun yung exemption under sa right to object. So, another, um, another exemption is if the information is collected, uh, as a result of legal obligation. So, hindi niya pwedeng um, i-withdraw yung consent niya. Okay, so, the second to the last right is the right to data portability. So, the right to data portability applies if personal data is processed by electronic means and in a structured and commonly used format. So, electronic means. So, hindi po ito mag apply kapag ang personal data is processed through manual processing. So, dapat electronic siya. And uh, in a structured and commonly used format. Ano ba to? So, under the law, it is yung NPC daw, or your National Privacy Commission, na magdedetermine kung ano ba itong structurally, structured and commonly used format. Pero just an example, PDF dot docx dot x yung excel xsl ba yon dot rtf so these are the structured and commonly used format okay so the data subject shall have the right to obtain ano ba ibig sabihin nito so the data subject shall have the right to obtain personal information from the personal information controller a copy of such electronic or structured format so kunyari pag ako nagsubmit ako ng resume in a pdf form I can uh, uh, obtain the copy of that in a PDF form then. So, para, ang, ang pinaka-essence nito is that so that the data subject can use it, can reuse it for other purposes. So, para, pwede ko din siyang gamitin yung PDF format to apply for another company. Parang, ganun na example niya. 
Okay, so the, the right to data portability allows individuals to obtain and reuse their personal data for their own purpose across different services. So, you know. So, okay, so the data subject can exercise this right if the personal data is obtained or processed based on contract, consent, uh, for commercial purpose and through automated means. So, if it is pursuant to a legal obligation or vital important interest, well, I don't think naman makakaroon ng mag apply data portability, portability doon. So, again, this uh, right to data portability applies if, it is, if the data is processed through electronic means and in a structured and commonly used format. And uh, this, the data subject can exercise this right if the personal data is processed based on consent, contract for commercial purpose, or through automated means. Okay, so our last uh, right is the right to damages. So the data subject shall be indemnified for any damages sustained due to such inaccurate, incomplete, outdated, false, unlawfully obtained, or unauthorized use of personal data, taking into account any violation of his her or her rights and freedoms as a data subject. So who is liable under the law? So if the offender is a corporation, partnership, or juridical person, the penalty shall be imposed upon the responsible officers, as the case may be who participated in or by their negligence allowed the commission of the crime. Okay? So if uh, the offender is a juridical person, the court may suspend or revoke the rights under, the, under this uh, law. And if the offender is an alien, he or she shall, in addition to the penalties prescribed under the law, can be deported without further proceedings after serving the penalties prescribed. So, medyo mahigpit ang batas natin when it comes to the violation. Okay, so, oh, so, sorry, hindi pala seven. So, um, there's another pa pala. Kalimutan ko. So, the most important or uh, right is the right to be informed. So, this is in relation to uh, to transparency principle. So, basically, the data subject has the right to be informed whether the personal data pertaining to him or her is being processed or have been processed, including the existence of automated decision-making and profiling. So, what information should be provided to the data subject? So, number one, again, description of the personal data to be uh, entered into the system. So, they have to know ano ba yung mga kinokollect na personal information. Number two, the purpose for which they're being uh, collected or processed. So, include if you're doing it for marketing, you have to specific, specifically inform that, that you're collecting it for marketing, for profiling, uh, historical, statistical research. Number three, uh, basis of processing. So, again, if it is based on a contract, legal obligation, um, pursuant to uh, ano pa ba? Uh, consent, so you have to inform them. The recipients or class of recipients to whom the personal data are, are or may be disclosed. So, example, it can be disclosed to DepEd, CHED, etc. or to a third party accreditor. Methods utilized for automated uh, access. What else? Identity and contact details of the personal data controller. The period for which the information will be stored. So, this is in relation to the retention, retention period. Um, the existence of the rights as a data subject. So these are the things that you need to inform your data subject. So when should the data subject be notified? So the data subject shall be notified and furnished with the foregoing information before the entry of his or her personal data into the processing system or to the or at the next practical opportunity. So, yeah. so, you have to, so kung ngayon, uh, you're processing personal information and you don't have uh, privacy notice, so hindi naman, hindi na game over. So, you can still notify your person, your data subject. Okay, so non-applicability of the rights of the data subject. So, uh, may two instances wherein the rights will not apply. So, number one, if processed personal information are used for needs of scientific, statistical research, and on the basis of such, no activities are carried out and no decisions are taken regarding the data subject. 
So, provided that the personal information shall be held under strict confidentiality and shall be used only for declared purpose. So, ito yung hindi mag apply yung uh, rights ni data subject. Another is when the processing of personal information gathered for purposes of investigation in relation to criminal administrative or tax liabilities of data subject. So, hindi pwedeng sabihin ni data subject na, okay, I invoke my right to erasure kasi, um, pero the data is being used for investigation. Yan. Okay, so we are on our last topic, which is the duties and responsibilities of personal information controller. Okay, so first, security measures. So personal information controller must implement reasonable and appropriate organizational, physical, and technical measures intended for the protection of personal information against any accidental or unlawful destruction, alteration, disclosure, as well as against any other unlawful processing. And to protect personal information against natural dangers such as accidental loss, destruction, human dangers, uh, what else? such as unlawful access, fraudulent misuse, unlawful destruction, alteration, and contamination. So that's the security uh, measure requirement under the law. So how do we determine now the appropriate level uh, of security? So you must take into account the nature of the personal information to be protected, the risks represented by the processing, the size of the organization, and the complexity of its operations, current data pri privacy practices, and the cost of security implementation. So, so if you're processing, let's just say, um, sensitive personal information, then uh, you are required to uh, put in place a more heightened um, security measures. So the law will also, uh, you also have to take into consideration the cost. Baka naman kasi unreasonable, I mean, hindi kaya sa budget ng school, di ba? Or ng, ng corporation. So uh, the cost of security should also be uh, implemented. So uh, what else? Uh, what are the measures to be implemented? So uh, it should include safeguards to protect the computer network. Uh, against accidental or unlawful uh, uh, unlawful processing. Security, there, you must have a security policy with respect to the processing of personal information. Uh, you must, ha you must uh, have a process for identifying and accessing uh, the vulnerabilities of the computer network. So, kailangan i-test mo din siya yung uh, kung na-hack ba siya, kung madali ba siya i-hack. And then you must have a regular monitoring for security breaches. So usually, yung iba pa nagpa practice pa para meron pang um, drill. Uh, so, in order to ensure kung effective ba yung uh, personal data breach management nila. Okay, so uh, the personal information controller must further ensure that third parties processing personal information on its behalf shall implement the security measure. So, again, if there's an outsourcing agreement. The agreement should uh, also stipulate yung mga duties and responsibilities ni processor in order for the data controller to comply with its obligation naman. Okay? Uh, what else? So, if, there's, uh, if there are employees involved in the processing of uh, personal information, you have to ensure that there's a strict confidentiality that will bind the employee. Okay, so it's under section 20 of the of the law, so you can just check that out. So the law mentioned three kinds of security measures. So we have the organizational, physical, and technical security measures. So ano ba yung organizational security measures? Ito yung mga security measures that you have to put in place in the organization, like policies. Uh, number one jan is the appointment of a data protection officer or compliance officer. So again, your data protection officer is not the controller. So the controller is the entity itself. So the law provides for the qualifications um, for the or the IRR, I think, that provides for the qualifications uh, for the data privacy or data protection officer. 
what else? So, uh, for organizational measure, you have to also put in place data protection policies. Ano yung mga policies na yun? Like, you have to implement policies that will um, comply with the principle that we've discussed uh, a while ago. So, kailangan, uh, may, do you have policy para ma-prevent yung excessive collection of personal data? Or you have retention uh, retention schedule uh, in order to comply with the storage limitation as provided by the law. So what else? So if you if you allow employees to bring their own to use their own devices whenever they process personal information, so at least you must have a bring your own device policy. Because uh, um, that's very important because when you want to, you have to retain control over the personal data that you're processing. So kung nasa employee yung kung nasa device na employee, syempre the employee might say na it's a private uh, property. So yeah, so you have to address that situation. What else? Um uh, you have to document uh, the processing activities and you have also to conduct a routine review of your policies to ensure whether these are these policies are compliant with the law okay so that's um okay another important uh, point under organizational measure is that the management of human resource so you have to ensure that those uh, employees uh, who have access to personal data they are um you have uh, a sort of a non-disclosure agreement or confidentiality agreement and that it is clear to them that after termination of employment, they have to return the records uh, containing personal information under their custody. So that must be very, very clear to them. So that's management. Kasi, di ba, bulk actually ng personal information uh, are being handled by the employees of the company. And at the same time, the bulk of the information that the company is processing uh belong to the employees then the man okay so what else so contracts with personal information processors again we've discussed this if the uh, data controller or personal information controller decides to outsource uh, a processing uh, activity then the data controller should there should be an agreement between the controller and the processor and that that agreement we usually call the data processing agreement and that agreement must uh, stipulate certain um certain duties and responsibilities like responsibilities like um number one if there is a data breach or security incident the processor should inform the controller the processor should also assist the controller in compliance with the law. So just remember the specific uh, provisions that should be stipulated in the data processing agreement. Okay, so uh, uh, in connection uh, to this um, uh, organizational measure, so usually yung mga clients namin magtatanong na, kasi in, uh, prior the effectivity of data privacy, Data Privacy Act, marami ng mga schools and even other companies who are engaged in uh, outsourcing activities, like they outsource yung processing activities. Example niya, yung mga management systems, information manage management systems, so they outsource it from another company. So, they have an existing contract, pero not necessarily uh, a data processing agreement. So, we always tell them or we always advise them na they have to amend the contract in order to comply with the law. So, hindi enough yung uh, previous contract nila with the processor. So, they should uh, enter into another contract that will embody yung mga required provisions under the law. Okay. So, our next uh, uh, security measure is technical security measure. So, this refers to procedures, policies, and application to maintain, monitor, and control the and protect the IT infrastructure and information residing on the operation. So, uh, ang mga usual example nito, syempre, hindi ako IT expert, pero ang usual example nito, yung pag-install ng firewall, uh, may antivirus ka dapat, yan, tapos, um, yun, yun ang, ang, alam ko, example. Pero the IT experts, 
ano, they know ano yung mga specific uh, security measures required. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, your security, the technical security measure should also safeguard the computer network. So, dapat hindi siya, ano, hindi siya madaling mahack. Uh, what else? Uh, the ability to ensure the, and maintain the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the uh, personal information in the processing system. So, uh, later on, we will talk about data breach, but um, if there is, uh, there is also what we call the availability breach. So, kunyari, yung personal information, um, the, the 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 personal information or the personal data are not available for a certain period of time like 24 hours so that might arise to uh, data breach kasi nagkaroon ng availability breach okay then hindi mo siya ma-access for a certain period okay so as a part of technical measure also you have to uh, regularly monitor yung mga security breaches mo so you have to um a note yung mga security breaches mo and you have to check also yung yung resilience ng mga security measures mo okay uh, dapat then you have the ability to restore kung accidentally na wipe out yung data meron ka dapat siguro backup data and you have you can restore the data uh, you have also um, to put in place some encryption lalo na kung in transit yung data so, there must be an encryption. So, para kung na-intercept siya late ng mga hackers, hindi nila mababasa kung ano yung nandun sa uh, document na because it's encrypted. Okay, so another um, me uh, measure is the physical security measure. So, this refers to methods and controls used to proactively protect an organization from natural or man-made threats to physical facilities or buildings. So, ang example nito is uh, yung sa office natin, we have to make sure that if we're uh, working, uh, if we're dealing with uh, personal information, uh, we have to ensure that our um, yung physical arrangement of our office would ensure the confidentiality. So, uh, example yung sa guidance office natin. So, there are separate cubicles para sa mga counseling, pero hindi naman siya soundproof. So, pag nasa kabilang room ka, you can just easily hear kung ano yung mga napag-uusapan. So, you have to address that because uh, the physical measure, you have to address that in order to comply with the requirements of physical measure. Okay? So, you have to arrange your workstation in such a way that um, you can maintain the confidentiality of the personal information. Also, uh, limit access, yung physical access to certain uh, documents or records. So, dapat limit pa din yun. Uh, what else? Physical measures, you have you also have to consider yung mga uh, the equipment itself that you will use. Kung pagamit ka ba na uh, waterproof, fireproof cabinet. Yan. So, you have to take into consideration uh, those physical security measures. Okay, so the next uh, duties and responsibility is accountability. So, here, each personal information controller is responsible for the personal information under its control or custody, including information that have been transferred to a third party for processing, whether internationally or, domestic, or domestically. So, uh, what's important under the accountability principle is that even though the controller already transferred the data to another entity or disclosed the data to another entity, it is still the responsibility of the controller to ensure compliance with respect to the processing of that person's information. Diba? We've discussed earlier na ang, uh, the data subject can, uh, can invoke the right to object, right to erasure, right to rectification. And in case na tin-transfer ni data subject yung, ni, sorry, ni, ni personal information controller yung, yung information, and then later on, the data subject will uh, invoke their rights or will exercise their rights, then it is the obligation of the data controller to inform these third parties na, oh, si data subject, uh, he or she is, con is exercising his right to erasure. So, erase that. Or, the data subject uh, uh, 
uh, is um, ob uh, objected to the processing of personal information. So stop processing the personal information. So it is the responsibility of the controller to inform the third parties uh, to, to, to inform these third parties na the, the data subject is exercising his or her right. Okay, so hindi hindi po porket na wala na kay data subject yung uh, sorry the, wala na kay data controller yung information once na, na transfer na niya hindi ibig sabihin na na wala na liability si data controller so under the law uh, the data controller is uh, responsible for information under its control and custody okay. Uh, another uh, important point under accountability uh, is that the personal information controller is accountable for complying with the requirements of this act. So, uh, so in order to do that, uh, the data controller may uh, enter into contact contractual agreements and ensure certain security measures are put in place. Okay, so what else? So, the personal information controller shall designate an individual or individuals for who are accountable for organizations compliance so ito yung sinasabi nating appointment of data protection officer so when we talk about accountability it's important to remember that it's not enough that the controller uh, comply with the data privacy requirements so hindi po pwedeng paper compliance lang so they must evidence their compliance, they must be able to, they, they, the controller must be able to demonstrate their compliance. So, hindi lang basta sa papel. So, that's accountability requirement. So, another obligation of the controller is the information obligation. So, again, this is related to the right to be informed of the data subject, the transparency principle. Okay, so transparency or the requirement to be open and honest about the ways in which personal data is used is essential aspect of the law. So basically, you just have to be fair and transparent uh, with respect to the uh, personal information being processed by the organization or by the company. Okay. So again, uh, just to emphasize, the information provided to the data subject must be plain clear and easy to understand. Uh, the processing must be uh, compatible with the declared, specified, and legitimate purpose. And you can comply with this uh, information obligation through privacy notice. So, if you notice, if you have a CCTV camera, it's not enough na nandun lang yung CCTV camera. So, in order to comply with the information obligation, you have to uh, post notice na uh, accessible or madaling mabasa na na prior entering to a certain uh, uh, vicinity na this um, uh, place is monitored by CCTV so you have to have that notice okay so our uh, last this is the last last obligation is data breach notification so under the law um, whenever there's a data breach, uh, it is the obligation of the uh, data controller to inform the National Privacy Commission and the data subjects of the uh, of the data breach. But not always. So there are factors that you have to consider in determining whether you are required to report certain data breach. But before we discuss data breach, I would just like to differentiate kung ano yung security incident and data breach. Kasi security incident is not necessarily a data breach. So it is an event or occurrence that affects or tends to affect the data protection or may compromise the availability, integrity, and confidentiality of personal data. It includes incidents that would result of personal data breach if not for safeguards that have been put in place. So, example nito. Excuse me. Example, there are attempts to gain unauthorized access to to a certain excuse me, to a certain uh, data processing system. So, because uh, maganda yung security, technical security measures nung magaling yung IT mo kahit na may hacking incident hindi naging um, hindi naging successful yung hacker so 
there's a security incident there, the hacking itself. Pero walang data breach because you've installed certain technical measures that prevented the breach from happening. So, that's an example of a security incident. So, when we talk about data breach naman, or personal data breach, this refers to a breach of security leading to accidental or unlawful destruction or loss or alteration or disclosure of personal um, information. So, for example, in our earlier example, kung hindi uh, maganda yung technical measure na in-install ng IT mo and then naging successful si hacker, then that's the time there is a personal data breach. So, basically, not all security in incidents could, could be considered as data breach, but all personal data breach are considered uh, as security incident. Okay, so a uh, typical example uh, ng personal data breach, another example is that yung visitor's logbook nyo. So, we, uh, for sure, sa ma maraming companies, parang ito yung mga, wina parang, ano, hindi kayo masyadong concerned dun sa logbook. Ano ba nakalagay sa logbook? The name of the visitor, usually the ID, yung time, address, di ba, na-require pa. Tas, alam ko, may isa kong, institution, hindi lang pwedeng kanyari, Antipolo City or Tagig City. Kailangan specific pa. So, uh, so your visitor logbook, it contains a lot of personal information. So, pag nawala yung logbook mo, that's considered personal data breach. Okay? So, what is the obligation of the data controller with respect to data breach? So, again, the data controller must inform the commission and the uh, affected data subject uh, within 72 hours upon the knowledge of or where there is a reasonable belief by the personal information controller that a personal data breach requiring notification has occurred. So, ano ba yung, ano ba yung mga instances wherein the data controller is required to notify? So, notification of personal data breach shall be required when uh, it involves personal sensitive information or where any other information that may, under circumstance, be used to, ide uh, to enable identity fraud. Uh, if the personal information are reasonably believed to have been acquired by an authorized person and the personal information controller or the commission believes that the unauthorized acquisition is likely to give rise to real risk of serious harm to any affected data subject. Okay, so again, ano yung mga instances wherein there is, uh, uh, the, the controller is required to notify the NPC and the affected data subject, number one, uh, when, um, when the information that uh, has been accessed or uh, that has been accessed uh, will enable uh, identity fraud. Number two, when uh, the personal information are reasonably believed to have been acquired by an authorized person and the personal information controller or the, the commission believes that the unauthorized acquisition is likely to give real risk of serious harm to any affected data subject. Okay, so what are the contents of the notification? So it's uh, stated under section 39. So the notification shall at least uh, describe the nature of the data breach. So I don't know kung kayo receive na, pero there are several uh, companies registered uh, abroad na nag-issue na sila ng mga na mga uh, data breach notification. Uh, ako, kung familiar kayo doon sa time hop ba yun, di ba it's an app na I think it records yung mga, mga past uh, events mo sa buhay. So, they uh, they have this um, data breach uh, incident. So, they inform the user. So, for sure, Cebu Pacific uh, uh, inform its uh, data subject. Diba? Recently, they have they had this uh, data breach incident. Okay, so ano ba yung, again, the contents, the nature of the breach, ano, the personal data possibly involved, the measures taken by the company or entity to address the breach, and also the notification also include measures taken to reduce the harm or negative consequences of the breach. Okay, so uh, the representative of the personal information, 
that uh, the data subject can contact if they have questions. Okay, so uh, there are instances. So under the law, within 72 hours, dapat ma-inform na 72 hours upon knowledge or when there is a reasonable belief by the personal information controller that a personal breach requiring notification has occurred. So that's 72 hours. But there are instances where in delay notification uh, may be necessary. So notification may be delayed only to the extent necessary to determine the scope of breach to prevent further disclosure or to restore reasonable integrity to information and communication system. Okay? So, okay, we're done with our uh, lecture. So, if you have questions, kindly uh, type in your questions in the comment section. And can we just pause for a uh, bio break? Kasi kanina pa ako nakaupo dito for, I don't know, for ilang oras na? More than two hours na ba ako? Or, I don't know. So, I just really need to have this bio break. So, we'll j uh, I'll, uh, I'll be back. So, um, just uh, type in your questions and, uh, uh, and we will try to answer that. Okay? Okay, we're back. So, salamat sa mga nanood hanggang sa dulo. So, now we will uh, entertain a uh, question. So, please select the itong questions na to. Uh, the staff from Rex helped me out to help me to pick out some of the questions. So, first question, maganda yung first question eh. Okay. So, the first question, ito from Enzo. Can uh, attorney can data privacy act be used as a defense to make uh, evidence inadmissible in cybercrime like screenshots? Okay, so it's a very interesting question. Actually, first time ko siyang uh, na encounter. So actually, uh, under the law, uh, ano she? Uh, there's no specific provision under the law that would provide for the exclusion, de But in our evidence, we have this ex exclusionary rule. So, there is no specific uh, provision uh, with respect to that. Pero ang meron lang is privileged information. So, under the law, kapag ang privileged information uh, was uh, obtained in a manner that is that will violate the Data Privacy Act, it is inadmissible as evidence. So, in my opinion, so since wala, ha, pa, paano naman yung mga uh, sensitive or ordinary personal information? So, in my opinion, uh, we and hindi siya not necessarily inadmissible siya. So unless the rules of court uh, would tell us na inadmissible yung evidence, then we can still use it as evidence. Uh, or kunyari, for example, kinuha siya in violation of the anti wiretapping Act or uh, kinuha siya not in accordance with the rules on evidence. So hindi siya inadmissible. But and hindi mo din, uh, it, for, but for purpose of data privacy, pwede mo siyang na-violate, pero hindi ibig sabihin na yung evidence na nakuha mo will be inadmissible sa court. So, sana, uh, sana nasagot ko yung tanong mo. So, our next uh, question, are financial statements of cooperatives covered by DPA? Of course, yes. Uh, financial statements covered by DPA yan. Uh, it, uh, kung, kung unless deposits siya, pero kung general financial information, it it is considered as uh, ordinary personal information. Okay, so itong question naman natin, 
uh, government regulatory body requiring a company to submit the payroll summary list and sample of payslip of the lowest rank employee to determine if the company is paying the minimum wage requirement set by law. Such documents will be attached as evidence as proof in the report of the monitoring person of the government agency. Does this proof violate the Data Privacy Act if, uh, if the company will provide the said documents? So, Again, as a general rule, if the if it is a government agency, look for the charter or the law that provides for such authority to collect information. And then kapag meron siyang authority, then you have to comply with the proportionality requirement. Baka naman too much ang, ang hinihingi ng, ng government agency. So dapat it's just enough to accomplish that purpose. So if, you're, uh, if your question is about uh, SSS, for sure, they have this obligation. But, but uh, you have to take into consideration the proportionality principle. So kung too much, you don't have to give, give everything. Okay? Uh, what else? For a company to replace DPO, is it compulsory to seek first a board resolution from its BOT? So in my opinion, the DPO naman kasi is not a corporate officer. So I guess the president under its power can just appoint a DPO and then later on affirmed by the by the board of trustees. So that's my opinion. Okay, so uh, another question. Is a newspaper company allowed to publish the name and mugshot of an accused who is undergoing trial? So we have to, of course, take into consideration the journalistic purposes. So syempre, freedom of the press and um, of, of, of expression. So I guess uh, it's uh, it's one of the exclusions under the law. So they can actually do that. The, the, the newspaper company can publish that. Okay, uh... Okay, so ang next question naman natin, it's not, uh, hindi siya nag-post, pero it was sent in, through a private message. So, ang tanong niya, our company has a third-party uh, outfit that helps us check the health and wellness of our employees. Question, what are helpful measures to safeguard the personal information? So, first, if you're dealing with a third-party company, you have to make sure na meron kayong agreement. So, determine kung processor ba siya or another controller. So, kung another controller siya, you have to make sure na you have a data sharing agreement. Kung processor naman siya, meron kayong data processing agreement. And also, in that uh, contract, you have to make certain, uh, like, for example, provisions uh, visible talaga or for example, uh, indemnity clause to also to protect your company. And if you're sharing health or uh, health wellness, but also if you're sh uh, sharing health information, siguro you have to consider uh, sodomizing the data. So you remove the some of the aspects that will that will make that in, uh, individual easily identifiable. Or also, of course, to get the consent if you're dealing with health information, because it's sensitive information. So, okay. So what else? Okay, so I'm still receiving uh, no, questions. How about messages from a group chat? Can they use the one to degrade your efficiency rating or may use to file for us? Uh, so ito, ang, I think the question is, for example, there was this employee na siguro na discipline siya because ang evidence na ginamit is the group chat. So ako, ang stand ko dito is that first, the company should have a policy with regard to processing uh, personal information na involving mga group chat. So dapat very clear sa policy nila na they can be disciplined for the for uh, yung mga behavior nila online, including sa mga chat room. So uh, so that para makakulong apply tayo sa transparency principle. And then, so, syempre, yung, yung screenshot, kung yun ang ginamit as evidence, unless si company ang gumamit nun na like siguro hinak niya yung chat room. So, that's, hindi pwedeng gawin ni company yun. Pero kung may co-employee na nag-screenshot and then from that uh, screenshot na discipline si company, I think the company is not violating anything. Kasi naman, uh, binigay lang naman yung evidence eh. From the, nanggaling siya sa isang member ng group chat. So, uh, ang kailangan ng gawin ni company is to make sure na transparency na that the, the employee will be disciplined for uh, for the things they do online. Okay? Uh, what else? Okay. Dali. Uh, yes. Ano pa ba ito? Okay, so... From uh, Aureliano Reviewi, so can you distinguish personal information from sensitive personal information? So 
as a rule, uh, sensitive, all sensitive personal information are considered personal information. Pero not all personal information are considered sensitive. So basta, when we talk about personal information, it's uh, it uh, any information that will relate to an individual. Pero kung nag-fall ka dun sa mga uh, list na sinabi dun sa na under sensitive information like health, education, uh, sexual orientation, etc. So you, the, the information will be considered sensitive personal information. And remember, there are different grounds for processing uh, the personal information and sensitive personal information. Okay? Okay, so my questions pa ba tayo? Uh, okay. What are the remedies available to data subject in case of violation of data privacy? So, uh, first, uh, if you think there's a violation of data privacy, there's uh, the NPC issued uh, rules and procedures. So first, you have to notify first the uh, the company. So for example, if it is a school, you have to uh, notify the school na, na you think na, na violate yung privacy mo. And then you have to give them the opportunity to uh, rectify whatever uh, the mistake was. So pag hindi sila nag-comply doon, that's the time you go to uh, to the NPC. So you can file a complaint. So it's just like um, filing an affidavit, uh, uh, a notarized affidavit sa, sa NPC. So yun. Okay. Um, how about information relating to COVID patients? Is it a, a violation? So remember, if it is a health information, you have to... Uh, you have to look for the lawful basis. So, ano ba yung lawful basis under the law? So, we have the consent, uh, ano pa ba yun? legal obligation. So, ang tanong dito, I think, is uh, yung DOH. So, there is this law that would, uh, yung mandatory reporting. So, if uh, DOH is, ex is exercising uh, that power pursuant to that mandatory reporting law, then they can, uh, their basis would be the legal obligation. So, it's okay. So, justified naman yung uh, DOH in doing that. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, I think uh, I think I, I answered all the questions. Meron pa ba? Uh, attorney, can you recommend the use of uh, to upload? Ano ba yun? Hindi <laughs> ata question yun. Okay, so Okay, um, uh, so yung pala may nagtanong about uh, retention ng mga school records. So yung transcript of records, yes, I agree na you can keep it for a longer period. Some schools would keep it uh, perpetually kasi for historical purposes. Like for example, UST, for sure, yung transcript ni Rizal nandun pa. Pero not all uh, school records. Siyempre yung mga quizzes, yung mga ano ba ba, report cards, ano pa ba yung retain sa school. So of course yun, merong retention period. But for the transcript of records, I agree na you have to keep it for a longer period. Pero you have to also take into consideration, like for example, nakagraduate na yung student for like say five years na. So dapat meron kayong policy na archiving na siya, tapos limit na yung access or a digitized news, something like that. Okay? So I guess that's it. Uh, I've answered uh, all the questions. So uh, again, thank you very much for listening. Ado sa mga uh, viewers natin na uh, nag-station hanggang dulo, maraming maraming salamat po. And uh, again, ang last tip ko sa mga bar examinees natin, study, 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 pray, pray, pray. So I can't wait to welcome you to the legal profession. So Again, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Rex Bookstore, and especially to Raxus City for making this possible. So if you have questions, or you can email me at traoa at estradaaquino.com. So that's uh, Tango, Romeo, Alpha, Oscar, Alpha, at estradaaquino.com. Again, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.